Welcome to my survival create world. I've been playing in this world for over 2000 days. Along the way, I've undertaken some truly epic projects, transforming this world from its modest beginnings into a giant interconnected realm. Before we delve into these past 1000 days, I want to mention that I got a movie on my channel covering the first 1000 days. If you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check it out to catch up on everything that's already happened. Also, a quick reminder, if you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe. My goal is to reach 100,000 subscribers by the year's end and your support means the world to me. Even if you can't watch the entire video, letting it play in the background or while you sleep goes a long way in supporting the channel and the work I do. I'm starting to outgrow my storage room a bit. Luckily, I still have a bit of space left, but I want a new building to house some bulk processors. And while we're at it, why not make a proper farm for both gravel, sand, and maybe even throw some terracotta in there. And to get ourselves started on this factory here, we need to start doing some material gathering. So I'm gonna grab up probably two shulker boxes because I'm gonna need a lot of wood. And to get ourselves our wood, we need to head over here to the lumber mill and get to it, gathering up all of the wood supplies we need. Some wood supplies here for the build gathered up. And I'm hoping here I, in my storage that I have some terracotta. Yes. We'll turn a bit of this into some bricks right here. And forget about a couple of red terracotta bricks as well. I need to make some cyan dye here. So hit my wall into the wall of chest. And where, where are my cactus? Ah, oh, there they are. Thank you. I'm curious if I have any rooted dirt. I think I do. Not up there. Um, not in any of those. Any of the vegetation ones? Oh, oh, here it is. Alright, perfect. And before we get building here, we also have to run over to the spider farm and I need to repair my tools. With our tools repaired, I have one block that I'm missing. So let's pick up a shulker box, fly up to the steam power plant where I have now hidden my nether portal right here. Merging out here at the mangrove, I've got to grab up a box of mud because I'm running low. Box full of mud and a few extra muddy mangrove roots as a bonus. And we will actually be using a few of those today. Over at the barn as well. Let's see. Yes, we're going to grab up a stack of wheat so we can make some packed mud. We are also going to do a harvest on our fields because, yeah, it's pretty full. And um, I don't know how the other ones are doing, but hopefully they're fine. I'm still lacking on the rice department. Um, I've got four rice so far. Nope, never mind. We got five now. I've got this big empty area up here on the mountain right next to the steam plant. And I think this is going to be perfect for our building factory. There is just so many animals animals though. Oh, Minecraft, your pathfinding, it's weird. If you didn't know, animal pathfinding will pathwind upwards. So that's why on mountains in long-term worlds, you will always get animals concentrated on the top of hills. I haven't been that much over here, but I'm thinking if I just fly over here, there will be animals up here. Yeah, it's full with animals. While down here in the valley, there is barely none. But enough with getting sidetracked. I, I need to get rid of these. There's way too many of them. And to help me with this build, I drew up a quick sketch. And I didn't do this on digitally, so you're just gonna get a picture of it instead. This is a good start here, but I've also prepped some cut tough because I want to get in a train platform, and that's the block I've been using. So I think we can start in this corner here and extend it all the way out. Yeah, let's do it to our shulker boxes and then a cross right here. I'm envisioning a few steps right here, and then we can run it back into the wall. And I think I want the ground level to be right up here, so I'm not gonna extend that down, but I will. We'll go ahead and fill it in and then we can leave a little bit of a gap in that right there for the little front bit that we have on the sketch. And now let's get these foundations here finished up. Great start here. And I'm envisioning this to be the foundation for the tower. Then we have that little side bit right over there. We get the front bit and we have the main building here in the middle supported by the deep slate. So let's start with this little bit over here. And I want to grab a few deep slate bricks on top of this for a little bit of an edge. Then some jungle planks here on the inside right there. Because I'm thinking the floor is going to go on that level. And then moving up from this, let's add in the wall. Starting us off with some jungle here towards the bottom. 
And once we reach a little higher here, we can start adding in some oak. While we're up here, we might as well start to add in a roof on this little bit here. And I'm thinking we go super, super simple here with a few slabs, just stacking those up here on the outside. We can join together the previous trim here with this one. And then we can take some deep state tiles here and just extend them over a few blocks. And this will eventually meet the wall of the main structure. It looks a little weird with only one support up there. So let's actually get rid of that. And then we'll replace it with two of them instead. Yeah, that looks better. We'll also get some further a little bit of support down here. Or, well, mainly decoration. And, of course, this gap right here in the middle is for a big window. And who doesn't love a good old bay window? And, well, if I had higher render distance, I think it would be a pretty nice view. With the first bit done, I swiftly moved on to the main portion, filling in the walls with a brick mix. With the main structure in here now, let's start getting in a couple of walls. And we'll go with the same texture we did on the little other sticky out bit. Yep, that's that's technical term, sticky out bit. I've already gotten an early start here on some decorations for a main entrance. And on the inside of this, we'll just start with some spruce trap doors right here at the top, which we'll extend down. Some spruce to start off our floor. And well, we might as well actually add in the whole floor. Then with the inside prepped a little bit, hopping up to the roof of the front here, and we can start adding in a simple barn-shaped roof. Running through our building here now, we need to get this edge in. And, well, it's gonna be a giant tower. So, let's start stacking this up. Let's build this tower up quite a bit. Moving up here, I've started incorporating a little bit of rooted dirt in the build. Fly back up here to get in the final touches. Or well, at least the shell of the building. So to combat that, I definitely needed to get the roofs in on both the main structure and the tower. Some final fixes here right on the side. And now I want to switch some gears and do some create. Switch up gears. Get it. Create. <laughs> so funny. Um, you should um, consider subscribing for more awful jokes. And because it really helps me out. And I'm not sure why I haven't done this before. But of course, I should just put my toolboxes in my ender chest. And then I have them with me wherever I go. The first thing I'm going to want running in here is definitely a bulk processing machine. So that I can blast, wash, and huff haunt and all of that stuff super fast. So we'll get two lines of shoots in right here. And I'm pretty sure, yes, I have some copycat panels. Which I want to place right at the back right there. Then we can run some blocks. I'm still getting used to using these, but getting ourselves a few encased fans. Hop up and we can play some fans right here. Then let's get a campfire, soul campfire, water, and lava in right there. And the fans can blow through the copycat panels, so the lava and the water don't flow out. And you can't see the water through the... Okay, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Down here, I want to get some buttons, and I want to break up the floor just that little bit here as I gotta get under. Get ourselves some redstone links here that we can place down here, and I'm gonna use a fan on the red one. I should have done this before I placed them. I'm just gonna place some random items in them instead. I should never use these filters. But what we're gonna do here is get some pistons right up here, and you'll see why in just a second before we can place some redstone links on the back of that, and yet again, get our random mix of items in on these. And with those being set to receive mode if i press this button here that will activate the piston and that's because i want this to be a choke box unloader and i easily want to get the choke box back a few more details here to get in to get it in working order and that should do it. So I've added in a display board right up here, which we can uh, display a little bit of interesting things later on. And that's going to be powered from over here. And then we have a lot of excess space in here, which I can build even more bulk machines in, just like this one. But for now, I'm going to keep it to this one. And as I need more, I'll add them. I've also gone and done some final decorations here on the outside, but the tower is still lacking a little bit. If you look up here, these dark oak windows, I want frog lights behind them. And um, I don't have a frog light farm, nor do I have access to frog lights. So I think we gotta go build a frog light farm. But before we go and do that, I'm afraid this side is looking a little flat. So I did add in that and I want to add in some sort of a balcony here. If we get ourselves up here and we can jump in here and place a door, first of all, actually back over here, I want to start with some staircases. Can I get these placed? I don't think so. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll use the scaffolding. It's fine. It's fine. Be smart about it, Stam. Oh, I'm, I've still fallen. We'll get every little railing on the outside of this. 
this. Up here, some more sparrows to add in some sort of a roof and maybe connect that down. Then bringing out some dark oak fence gates for the undersides of the stairs for this little balcony. And why the stair is up there and there's a stair, I'm, I'm not really sure. But there is. Having a step back here now and taking a look at how this build is looking, I've gotten inspired. And I'm envisioning turning this area in here into a courtyard, which means I need a building going off like that and around there. And well, I needed to do a little more work on this side nonetheless. So why not? I wanted to get this sketched out. So I grabbed my paper and updated the sketch. But with an extension planned, I'm not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but I really want to get some frog lights for these trap doors here at the top. And I've done a little bit of preparation work over on my streams, which means that I have a whole frog light farm in a box. And also I'm going to be streaming three times a week throughout all of January on the YouTube. So be sure to be on the lookout for that. And I'm definitely going to build this on the nether roof. So I'm going to grab a few stacks of redstone as I'm, I'm, I'm not really confident with the piston breaking method or, or the TNT breaking method. I mean, so let's craft up some pistons because I do still need those. And I just need some extra blocks and ooh, ender pearls because I need to get through the roof. So ender pearls. Perfect. I'm almost forget those. All right. Some ladders, throw an ender pearl in there and while well, we're on the roof. Perfect. Now with this method, I'm going to be able to break quite a lot pretty fast. So I think I'm going to break right here. And okay, let's see if I remember how to do this. So we're going to play some pistons facing outwards. But look some of those. And then we'll play some redstone. No. Oh, there we go. Okay. And then we'll place those. And now we break the redstone. Okay, good. And now we just have to place a bunch of redstone. All right, okay, let's let's see if I manage to do this. So, I'm going to need my pistons, and we should be able to go. So, spam this. Something like that. Remove these blocks. Get under here. Break these. And some pistons facing downwards. Quickly, because if it runs out, it will break. And then now we wait. For, for, for that to finish. I think I held it for too long. Yeah, I, I held it for a little too long. Oh. Yes, there we go. I think... Yeah, there we go. Six bedrock broken. Oh, I no, maybe not actually. Hello. Hi. Well, uh, um, that didn't work as planned. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and try it again. Maybe a few less. Oh, I'm missing a beacon. This is never gonna work. I've got some coordinates written down for a nether portal that I'm gonna use for now, and um, we'll, we'll fix this eventually. All right, should be right here. And we hop that in, and um, I should see some frogs on the other side of this. Yep, because I also prepped a couple of frogs. I still need to go get the uh, white ones from uh, the uh, from the uh, from the mango swamp. But we'll go and get these in just a second, as I want to get this frog light farm built. So hopping into replay mode here for a quick time lapse. Okay, yep, it's definitely working. Um, there's a few too many. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. I don't have many frogs at all. <laughs> yeah. All right, first golem going in there. Oh. Uh oh. Alright, I finally got them in there. Now I just need to start moving a couple of frogs. And I've AFK'd the frog light farm a bit, and hopefully we have enough. And oh yeah, okay, yeah, this is plenty. And why is there one of those guys die? Oh no, right, I, I one escaped and I and I killed it. Okay, right. Oh yeah, challenge completed. Okay, yeah, I think it did quite well. <laughs> um, one choke box wasn't even enough to empty it. Also got some extra magma cream, which is nice. Another box I made. Okay, and all of that just head up in the tower and place down. Is it six? No, it's actually gonna be. 12 frog lights. At least I can use it for the future. I've also just eaten my last piece of food. So hopefully, yes, more pigs. So let's grab this stack of raw porch up here. And I do have a cutting board here. And here is a knife. So I should just be able to... Yes, there we go. Perfect. 
And perfect. Two stacks of raw bacon. And I want to make bacon sandwiches. So I'm going to need tomatoes, cabbage leaves, and bread. So let's grab two stacks of cabbage, two stacks of tomatoes, and how much wheat do I have? Oh, that's... Is that going to be enough? Hold up. Let's see if a harvest does it. Oh, I do not think so. Darn. Yes, I've got to do some manual harvesting. Let's quickly cook this bacon. Make sure not to blast it. And is there actually a cheaper way to make bread? Yes. With water buckets. Which... Uh, Damn, no, I'm, I'm too lazy to do that. Or I'm I, I, actually never mind. I'm not too lazy to do that one, though. Huh. We already had one dough on there, I guess. But we can another stack with this. We can blast it. Not blast it. Uh, smoke it. There we go. With our stacks of bread, we can make two stacks of bacon sandwiches. Perfect. And yep, they taste good. They taste good. For the extension now of the building factory, I need to gather up even more blocks. And the first stop to gather up blocks is going to be the lumber mill, where I need all kinds of different woods. These are all the wood supplies we'll be needing for this build, with a lot of other blocks missing. I just ran around my storage room a little bit to try to gather up most of them. Now, I've only got one crushing wheel here to work with, and I need a few more. And I've already got some anisite alloys. Just gonna need a little bit of wood and some stone block. I think anisite works. Hopefully, this is on... No, it's it's not on. Um, What I could do... It's gonna be a little slower, but it's gonna work. Pretty sure I remember the recipe by now. It said these faster than the first time I was doing these. Perfect. And there's one more block, and there's few of that. Um, I should have a few more mushroom stems. Yes, 19 more. Th that that's it. Now I'm gonna just combat this issue directly, as I've had it for a while. So I'm gonna need a hand crank, and do I have a saw up here? Yes, I do. Okay, perfect. Because I want to take the actual time here to build a mushroom farm or ranch, maybe. And for the longest time, I've had no idea what I want to build down here, but it really needs something. So I'm gonna clear out a few trees. I think this is going to be sufficient space for the building I want to build. And then we might have to clear a little more space to fit in the actual farm. And I have gone ahead here and prepped a couple of blocks. So let's go ahead and start with a little bit of digging. Now I want to jump straight into this build here. And let's start with a floor for our basement slash first floor. Before we can start building a couple of walls around this, of course. Over here, I'm thinking we can start in a chimney, which we'll go ahead and extend up in just a little bit. I want to bring out both of the short sides here, just a block to add a little bit of shape to this whole build. Then we can come in with some white terracotta on top of this. Continue this upwards here on the corners, where we can start adding in a little bit of mushroom stem. I know, using mushroom stems when I'm supposed to be making them, it's fine. And then above this here, I want to take off our red mushroom blocks. And let's start adding those in. Let's see, we'll go that. Then we'll go two more up. And finally, two more up again. And yep, this looks very weird. But if you take some red mushroom blocks and connect them like this, all across this, and then we remove those, you're gonna get a brownish texture and it looks very nice. It's just a little bit of extra work. But in the front of this, I want to bring out a bay window, and I'm thinking we're eventually going to put the mushroom farm out here, so this window can be a nice little area to look over that. And while we're at it, decorating this side, I want to remove the block right up here, and just use that. Oh, no, no, that's not the right temporary block. I want to place that. Then we can remove this and shut it. And with that side figured out, and now we just have to replicate it, I want to get a little bit distracted first. As we come out, one, two, and three blocks here. Extend up some deep slate pillars to this block, and then back into the wall without falling stamp. We can go two blocks up, 
connect these another two blocks up and connect them and then we can also connect this over into the wall or maybe not wait hold up hold up hold up i think i, I don't think i want that yeah there we go we're going to be doing a little bit of terrain work here in just a little bit. But for these to look a little nicer, I do want to add in a few gates here to just round off the corners a little bit. Filling in a little floor here with some spruce because I do love my spruce. For some decorations out here, let's get some walls in right here. Now that I think about it, let's remove one of those. Two gates, another wall, and then we can connect that over to the wall and to the eventual wall that's going to be here. And thinking a little ahead here, let's get in a flower bed where I'm thinking we'll have have a window right here and we'll get an allium and a rose bush just like that perfect out here i want to extend up some spruce fences to blocks then we can start on the roof at least on this part with some viridium which can go all the way over over the flower bed and that's that's a missed block there we go and maybe some down here and another gate yeah that's gonna look good just have to fix the rest as we got the style down for the main portion of the build we just gotta replicate it on the other three sides well it's starting to look like a building at least before we tackle the roof here i do want to bring out at the back door here a little bit of a ramp so i'm thinking to take out two oak and then two more some upside down stairs and then we can fill this in with some slabs for a little bit of a ramp as if the farms are out here you can be transporting the blocks into here i'm not really gonna be using the space up here but it's here and it's a little cute with the build looking cute we still have to finish up the roof so grabbing some waxed exposed copper to finish that off It's a little odd, and I'm using some blocks that might not be used too often, but I quite like it. But it's just a house right now, so I booted up my stream to first of all work on a pathway leading over there. And with the road now over here done, I just had to finish up the actual farm. Now I gave it a quick test run here on stream and it works absolutely amazing. Now all I need to do is cut down all of the stems and well, I have to cut down the caps as well, but I feel it's worth it. So let's gather up a few of these now that we have the farm working. Now definitely getting a lot of brown mushroom blocks, but I'm also getting the stems, so can I really complain? And now I just gotta run in and get the final blocks. And here are all of the blocks that I hope to be using, and I've also got some components right in here, along with my toolboxes in the ender chest. Oop, almost, oh, well, oh, okay. And I wanna jump straight into getting some building done here, so I wanna start off with extending our tough foundation here. And we'll extend that off, leave a little gap right there, and then let's see. One, two, and another three blocks, and then we can start the structure going that way. On top of this here, let's grab in some stone bricks right here, and uh, gotta get myself up there. We can bounce up here, and then connect these up right here, because I do want to do an archway in here to get over to a path that I've just built on stream, which you can see right here. Coming back to the focus of the video instead, I want to continue extending these walls up here. should give us something like this for this little archway here as well let's try something new with some spruce support well spruce support aren't really new but i haven't done an archway like this before so we'll just take away all of those and yeah that's looking actually pretty good what we'll start doing next here is grabbing our spruce wood and dotting that every other block right here then realize you forget the blocks have to hop down and not the egg thank you and get some dark oak slabs to put in between and while we're down here, let's throw some spruce buttons. Maybe let's also see some dark oak support that we can throw below here to give it a little bit more of a supported look. Yeah, I'm liking that. Moving on top of this, I think we're going to have to connect this somewhere here. So let's leave space for a doorway. And we'll continue this pattern off right here using our diorite mix. Moving upwards, I want to start... Nope, that's, that's the powder. I need the block to incorporate here. Where we can continue this pattern up to form a wall. And then we can add in some orange stained windows right here. And I can just walk there. Play some fence gates on the top. Play some mangrove leaves at the bottom. No, not, not there. And then we can get some trapdoors to get some shutters in here. Oh, oh. 
And why not throw some flower pots? That's starting to look good, but all right. We're gonna need some more catwalks and a door. Which if we just extend this one out two blocks, we can add in the door. And getting our wrench out to hopefully fix this with minor problems. Perfect. And ooh, that's, that's, that, that's gonna be like that. With the style for this portion of the build now down, I moved on to the other side to fill that in. Just like on the opposite side, I want to extend out the balcony here and we'll remove those two. And then we can start adding in the back of these. Uh, actually, no, these are going to be right here because then I can place these off the end. Perfect. And a door. And now this balcony makes a little more sense. Throw some gunpowder in here. I've also prepped the schematic cannon, which I'm going to let go now. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it's going to be building up here. But uh, this is a part which I didn't design myself. And it's also very, very precise. And there has to be timings. And um, I wasn't confident that I could uh, build it. And while the schematic cannon is working away at the create components in the attic, I want to get the foundation layer in. For this, I'm bringing back some acacia and cyan terracotta. And it looks like it's finished up there uh, like I am down here. And I just need to run up and check. So what this is, is Batsy's design on a cobble generator and it's all her brains down here i need to get a minecart in but this is a really lag efficient farm which i really need in this world i have to get some final things in here such as the water and the lava but i i, I need to get the rest of the building in before i can do that i need to get a minecart before i forget which needs to go right in okay let me just uh which needs to go right right in there okay perfect i could turn this on technically or maybe i should yes it it definitely works okay let's turn it back off before i break anything I'm scared I'm going to break stuff. If, if it were to break now, it would probably break while running. I'm not sure what would be worse. I do want to come in here on the outside for a little bit. And first of all, get a floor in. And well, we're going to be using our cobble deep state because cobble deep state floors look amazing. As I want to take a little bit of a break from building and get some technical things in here. So let's start off with some barrels and hoppers. And taking some item vaults. Let's get our storage in first. So we'll get them four long. And I'm going to be creating three things in here. So well, I need to have three giant ones. Vaults. Perfect. So this one over here is going to be gravel, this one's going to be sand, and this one's going to be terracotta. From here, I actually want some depots here instead, so that we can output items onto those. And I realized my funnels are empty. I need more funnels. I'm also out of electron tubes, so flying here over to the redstone factory, where I should be able to grab another stack, so that I can craft up two more stacks of brass funnels. Perfect. I'm going to be working backwards here, getting some create components in right over here. Working on the area where the clay is going to be smelted into terracotta. Uh oh, I've had a, I've had a minor accident. Whoops! I need to get these glass trap doors in first. Flip them down, and um, I'm gonna go retrieve the other ones because I still need those. Oh, it's a little dangerous. Okay, we're good. And now we can place back the lock. And to also make this a little safer, let's get a few trap doors in here to cover it up a little bit. But I'm going to need to leave that one block right there open. As I want to set up a weighted ejector targeting that block from right over here. As we can start on the clay area right over here. Where I want to turn sand into clay. And to do this, I'm using a basin to compact clay balls into clay blocks. And I'm not going to go into too much depth of what is going on right here, but it's basically the components returning clay into terracotta. And we're going to get some more components up here set up in just a little bit. But new for this episode, I'm going to be releasing a video on my second channel where I go into a more in-depth view on how all of the farms and components I built in the video works. So if you're new to create or just want to learn a little bit more, consider heading over there and checking it out. It'll be linked in the description. I'm also going to take some comments from the previous video, so I'm going to look back at episode 10 for this one and see if there's any comments i want to reply to in a video format instead where i can go a little bit more in depth and i think it's a really fun spin on what the jojo is doing on his question of the day enough of the self plug and with my create itch scratched i moved on to creating the second story with some further details here the second floor is looking awesome with some uh, minor confusities because i need to get the roof in and i think that should lay pretty well on top of that but the first floor is lacking a little bit so to the side facing the steam engine was a bit flat and that's where I left a big open area here where I can extend in a crimson part.
And to finish this little crimson outcropping here, I want to extend in a super, super simple deep slate roof. We'll just slant it up and make it a little more with some blocks. Another layer in. Don't have enough deep slate to do this, so we'll take away that. And I'm too lazy to run to storage, so let's just extend in some stairs right here instead. That does not look that bad. But what does look bad is these being open, so let's get some trap doors to fix that. Super simple, but it adds to the site. Some more decorations here with some spruce support on these gateways as well. Make them slightly different from the other archway. No. Oh. Luckily, I have a few extra laying around. Above this as well, let's flip this upside down and extend in those two. Then we flip it back and we can do this little thing right here. Yep, I'm liking that. And we can remove those without stripping any more logs. Thank you. Over on these little windows here, let's add in some spruce and birch in the middle. And then we do not strip. And now I'm a little scared of doing it, but I'm managing. Finally, over here, are some blue windows, leaves. Realizing I don't have any scaffolding on me, so let's get some trapdoors in up there. And if we can just oh, joint that in and Finally, a few more spruce support on the side to act as shutters. Perfect. Getting a floor in right over here so that we can start working on the create components here on the inside. And these are a little bit complicated here, so I'm using Logmatica to get them in. And I could be using a schematic cannon, but I think it's fun to place the blocks myself. Let's go grab ourselves some crushing wheels here and get those in on top of these right here. And I am in love with this machine. I need to remove that and get one final crushing wheel in there so that we can get gravel from there, sand from here, and then the terracotta from the side. And with the create components finished, I just had to finish up the roof to get the cobblestone farm working. I used a colorful one for the one in the middle and then a mud and spruce for the other one. Now the building is looking great. I, I I do need to do a little bit of work on the outside here, but I want to see if this all works. No, I'm, I'm really hoping it does because I'm not remembering if I set up all of the logic correctly. So we'll have to find out. But let's grab our, where are those? Let's grab our kinetics. And I think I want to power it from here somewhere. What if I just extend this belt down and into the ground? Yeah, that should work. Oh, and yeah, here it is. Okay, perfect. I'm going to break these two. Let's replace them with two new ones. Yep, passing on under the river at the steam power plant. I've also just thought about it and oh i don't have any speed controllers uh oh i'm gonna go ahead and make four here as i'm also out of brass casing gotta make a few of those but i'm not out of precision mechanisms luckily it's a little yank but if we reverse it and speed it up i think that should be working i'm gonna hope i'm correct and just start to fill this hole in as uh, we're not gonna be needing it there we go so these all seem to be working are they spinning the correct direction Ooh, they're not okay so we need to invert this signal somewhere uh, which i'm already doing up there okay let's uh let's revert it again Perfect. Now those are blowing air this way and we can place a choker box up there and we can get the smelted items. And yep, all works. Moment of hope over here. Yes. Okay. It all seems to be spinning the correct direction except this one because it's missing a shaft right there. All right. One final thing that we need to do is to turn on the cobble gen, which means I need to switch this here to a receive mode. Yep. Okay. That sounds like it's working. Uh oh, this belt isn't working though. Hmm. Uh oh, my logic is wrong. No, it's not off. It's correct. I'm just missing a shaft in the middle of these two, I think. Yep, right there. Oh, perfect. There we go. I'm glad to see that it's working. We're starting to see terracotta in here, sand in here, and gravel right over here. Perfect. The terracotta is not going to be filling up quite so much right now, just because it doesn't have its own line. So all of the sand is currently being put into the storage. But once that fills up, it's going to be turned into clay instead through this washing station down here. Now, what I've also done here is I've gone ahead and rerouted the train track to go into the mountain instead. And that loops around and eventually arrives up here. And before you tell me, yes, I, I know the, the train tracks aren't realistic, but this is Minecraft. And that's because I want this to be some sort of a station, so I definitely want the train to be able to stop right here. But we also need it to go over there. And I'm just realizing now that that's that, that one is one higher. Aww. That should be fine. I just need to mine a little bit of deep slates. Okay, it actually works with a little bit of an elevation change here. It should be fine. If we just make it go up and then it can come back down and over to that station. Perfect. Oh, that's why this train is going so fast because there's coal in it because it's mined coal from mining the tunnel. Oh, oh, okay. We're up here now. Okay, let's see. How do we do this? I want to run it from the other direction. I'm scared it's going to break any of my builds here because I have a few extra rollers on it. Um, Yeah, that's going to be an issue. Okay, time, time to revamp it more. I should really get two trains for doing this 
Okay, let's see how that. So we'll turn on the rollers and let's see how this works. All right, it's mining some deep state. That's why it's a little slow. But this should work pretty well. Scared it's going to break a little bit over here. Nope, it's fine. Oh, it's killed a chicken though. And then down into the slope, which also hasn't been deep slated. At least not the top part here. If we go a little bit in, it has. It should start right around this corner. Yep, right there. Can see it. Oh, speed. Okay, well, that fixes the track issue. It will also help me get a little bit of a clearer idea on where I want to bring the terrain in this area. So let's go and grab some dirt. Where I want to try to level it out a little bit and make it a little smoother. I grabbed up a few decoration blocks, but I want to grab some rooted dirt and a little bit of normal dirt. As I want to get a few more decorations in here. Something I want to start off with is to bring out some walls right over here. And we'll do that roughly like that. Yes, to just border it off a little bit from this area over here. Then let's bring in a couple of crates here in front. We'll get some coal barrels maybe. And what do I have? Maybe a spruce barrel down here, an oak crate on that. Something a little bit further off and maybe even a chest just for a little bit of pile of material also how we Ooh, ooh. That's okay well this one is expected to be a little lower how much do i actually have oh that that looks weird but twenty-one thousand. okay that's filling up real fast anyhow let's get a few more barrels maybe up in this corner over here i, I, I want you facing upwards thank you for i also want to cover this up right over here so we'll get even a couple more barrels maybe a copper one and another one right over here because i do have them and they add a little bit of a different color and that fills out the areas quite nicely but i do want to take this rooted dirt and normal dirt and just add a little bit of texture to this so let's see here let's get some normal dirt right here in the middle then a bit of rooted dirt on the outside of that and that gives it a little more interest perfect and with the courtyard detailed up a little bit i wanted to move to the front facing the city and the rest of the world to decorate that up and match it up to the steam power plant a little more with those additions the building factory is complete both this factory and the brand new ranch will make life even easier when it comes to building i'm nearing the end of this world but i still have quite a bit of love to give it so i want to spend over 50 hours building terraforming and engineering i want to do a lot of this during live stream and already jumping in to the first one where i spent two hours terraforming between the railroad and mountainside where i now have this and i'm starting to like it i can already imagine this going all the way down over here i didn't spend the full two hours over there as i also fixed up the terrain over here as there was a big gap and i didn't touch this little area here on stream as i want to decorate it a bit and we're gonna need a few blocks for that and uh, i'm out of course dirt so let's grab up oh, my mobile's out of dirt as well let's grab four stacks of dirt fly up and around to the building factory oh it's gonna be so nice having access to gravel this easily as we can turn all of this into coarse dirt and that is more than enough as we only need about a stack i should be able to grab up all of the blocks i need i need some spruce fence some trap doors gonna need to make a few more spruce support slabs make one more set of trap doors two campfires let's grab a barrel which heading over to the ship workbench here i want to create a spruce crate out of rotating our storage which i am still absolutely in love with where i need to grab two oak fences nope that's jungle stamp and just a few acacia leaves i don't need a lot of blocks but it does make a difference and i want to start with extending out the coarse dirt a bit before we give some spruce slabs on here let's grab our campfire spruce trap doors and some other stuff as right here let's grab in two campfires and actually i want to place those that way i do have soap touch on this no, no, that way. There we go. You can distinguish those. Then stack up some trapdoors on this to create a little bit of a bench. Or what if we even take away this trapdoor, add in a spruce crate. Just stick a flower pot on top of that. And over here, maybe some of our jungle fences to create a little bit of a, like, a bush. Something just like this. Looks a little odd, maybe up close, but no, I quite like it. And I do want a little bit of a barrier. And hello there. Um... I'll actually buy the alliums. Alliums, thank you very much. That's, yeah, that's all I want. Let's just continue my fence a bit. Something like that, and you can get a nice view over the farming area and our eventual terraforming. Just a small little bench and some flowers up here, and I think it looks pretty good. 
also added in a little bit of a lantern to keep it a little mob safe. Another thing I did notice is that I do have a door up here. And well, because I never really moved into the starter house, I never really fixed up this area up here. So I'm thinking if we just extend a little bit of coarse dirt up the mountain here and run it all the way over to this little pathway over here. It doesn't have to be the biggest of paths as this is not a path that's walked too often. Now, just a swallow path already looks good. I think I do need to replace the dirt before I can do this next step here. And I'm sorry, Lum, but you're gonna have to go. As what I want to do is take up a lot of bone meal. I don't want a lot of flowers, but I do want a lot of tall grass. And just trust me here a second. Where we right now have a lot of tall grass in here, it kind of guides the player in between the paths a little bit. Maybe a little more even in here to guide the player even more and back to the original path. Which is a really, really cool way to just kind of like, hmm, there might be something through there because there's a little bit of a gap. And maybe we can even include a little bit more grass right up here just to guide our eyes just that little bit more to the path and not to this area up here. And now with even more grass, I think it makes it even more prominent. It might be a little hard to spoil it, but with the help of the coarse dirt, I think it's really quite cool. Oh yeah, I really, really like this feel up here. I also didn't have the time to texture the rocks right over here by the ball. So let's just quickly go ahead and do that. And to finish them off, just cover them a bit in some glow lichen, which they definitely look a lot better. I've got so many hours left of building here, and I am quickly running out of food, so I want to do a quick little harvest of my fields as I as I need some more BLTs. And while we're waiting for that to arrive, yep, we have a lot of pigs ready to be slaughtered. Stack of cork shop, and hopefully we have a stack of cabbage leaves. Yes, we do. And I was told this last time, and I do know this. I was just a little too lazy to shop my cabbage. And I have an auto clicker here, which I want to try. How fast would this be? Uh, okay, maybe I won't use that. That was... Okay, now I know this is the most bulkiest thing, but could I use this? As I really just want to smoke it, can I just... Oh, no, no. All oh, right, the filters. Okay, never mind. I'll set it up, I swear. I'll use it sometime, okay? Give our wheat a quick wash. And now we can make ourselves some more BLTs. With our food supply now restocked, I want to do some work over here. This is an area I haven't really touched since, well, episode 2. And um, that was a while ago. And well, I want to replace this cobble generator. Because it's very laggy and I need a little more stone output as well. So I want to replace it with a batsy design instead. But to do that, I've got to start taking it apart first. Feels very weird removing this as I built it so long ago, but it had to go. But we do need something to replace it, so I need to spend a little bit of time here gathering up a few new components to create the new cobble generator. Now I've got everything gathered up except some gunpowder. Okay, I have gunpowder. Thank you. Would have been a bit annoying if I didn't. Now let's see settings. We're gonna do replay solid with empty. Protect entity. Yep, yep. Take some gunpowder. Throw that in here. We'll, we'll throw in all of it. But I, I think that's gonna be enough. And then we'll go. Hopefully this will work. Okay, it all seems to be done. I fixed the actual liquids in here, which need a little bit of digging, but I've got it done. Now I need to get a... I need get one of these in there perfect and i think that should activate i don't think i have to do anything now i think maybe yeah it should work but before we can start the machine i need to head up here to the steam engine where it's very loud but i need to turn cobblestone on where if we head in here yes this is all spinning i need to find i need that and I need to change that to 256. Perfect. Because this cobblestone farm is actually so fast that it, it, it can't keep up if it isn't at max speed. Now, all I should need to do to start this 
And we should probably prepare over here as well. Getting in one more encased drive to connect up the rotation. That is spinning the wrong way. Nothing we can fix with a gearbox, however. And correct. Cool. Now, why don't we, while we're at it, also add in a brass funnel right over here to get things outputted up there. And ooh, right. Okay, I need... Well, we just need to do a quick little redstone link here, which is the thing I didn't have. I think gravel on top and cobblestone on the bottom to lock this funnel whenever the vault up at the top gets full. And I'll show you why in just a second here. If you don't remember all the way back from episode two, as we just got to try and turn this on. Hmm? Ooh, yes. Are we, we're getting cobblestone. That's what we like to see. Because if we look up here, you can see that, well, it doesn't go straight into the vault. It just kind of flies off the end of the belt. And uh, we need that right there to tell us when the vault is full so that we don't just have a lot of items sitting on the ground. And I've already got it hooked up here to the threshold switch. So when the vault up there fills up and this vault eventually fills up, it will all turn itself off and there will be no lag for me. But I didn't want to do this refurbishment only for the lag, as I also want to get some more output and I want to actually make a gold farm. Yeah, I am so far into this world and I still haven't made a gold farm and I want to make it quite a simple one. I don't need a lot of gold, but it's nice to have a supply of it. So I want to turn this cave in here to a gold mine to produce some gold for us. And the first thing, I think I want an elevator. An elevator is going to be so cool. A mine elevator. Oh, I've had this plan for months. I just haven't done it. Now, I definitely want something wooden for this elevator. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of spruce, some trap doors, maybe some fences. We'll see what we do. But the more important part is definitely going to be our elevator pulley, which, yes, I do have a little bit of dried kelp, an iron sheet. I should have brass casings. Perfect. There we go. I should also have some redstone contacts just because I've been building with them. Yeah, there we go. And I do want the elevator to start up here in the elevator. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. I think it's an elevator house of some sort. Basically, this is where the engine for the elevator is and the engine... Blah, blah, blah. Words are hard. Okay, look, look. This this is the house where the elevator mechanics happen and then the elevator is below it. And, um... Uh, uh, look, wait. However, I do think this one is a little off-centered, so I can't use the middle of it. But I'm going to try in the very, very corner and see where that ends up if I just dig straight down. Um, yep, that's quite good, actually. Yeah, that's pretty perfect. Up here, I don't have too big of a plan for how the elevator itself is going to look. But I do know I need a redstone contact like that. And then if we can craft down these into some slabs, we can maybe get those on the edge like that. And then if we have some spruce fences to cover the sides. And how do we do some sort of a roof for this then? What if we get some palisades going? I actually like that. Okay. Get that going around. Makes it look a little more secure. We can place a slab in the middle. And quickly hopping up here. I do have a few trap doors that we can just line the top with. It's not the prettiest thing, but it's something for now. Now we just have to figure out how to hook it up to power. Now, how was it you activated these? Was it just like that? I can honestly not remember. Did you just... Oh, yeah. Okay, you just click it. That wasn't very hard. Okay. I forgot you needed a contraption controller. Because without one of these, it's going to be a little hard to control the levels. I think I'm going to place it right here. Might move it in the future, but for now, it can go there. All right, we're at level one. And we can go down one floor. And perfect. Cool. Ugh. I don't really like that though. And actually looking at it down here, it actually doesn't look that bad. And I, I did I did replace the palisades with some gates up there. And I think that really helped it out. And also the little taller roof. I think it's good. And this down here is still working and it's filling up. Perfect. Yep, it's filling up because it doesn't need anything anymore. Now I'm going to need to fly over the mountain here and grab my beacon on the other side. Get the beacon built up over here at the mine instead where we can actually put it to use for now. I do need to put it back over there as I... I'd still need to dig out the river a bit more, but I'll do that in the future. 
Let's give myself some haste too here and let's get to digging. Because I actually want to take this elevator not only down to where I want to do the gold, but all the way down because I actually want to use it as mine and I should have done this so long ago uh, that I didn't. So let's do it now and um, time to get to digging. Well, that's an issue. The beacon doesn't reach this far down. I thought it had unlimited range downwards, but I guess not. And this should be minus 16, and this is where gold is most common. So I think it will be fitting if we have the elevator and the actual gold farm down here. Um, Yeah, it's going to be a little annoying mining all the deep slates and uh, getting down here because it's going to take a little while. But I think it's going to be worth it. And I think it's going to be fun to see the deep slate around us when you're at the farm. But first, I have to get up from here. So click that. And yep, it's coming for me. Elevator has arrived and we are at the gold level. We have iron, cobblestone and the entrance. Let's go up to the entrance. Let's see how long this takes. Okay, that's actually not that bad. It's only like 20 seconds. But now we have to actually make the gold farm and I've never made one of these. So we've got to spend a little time here in the storage room to get some blocks together. And it's mostly just running around looking through my toolboxes and crafting a few components here and there as this is going to be an underground farm. So I don't have to have that many decorational blocks. Don't need much more blocks here, but I do need a few more crushing wheels. So I've already messed up the recipe. And in the middle, and I was gonna say at this point, you know the recipe, but I I, I just seem to be bad at placing things in the boxes. Perfect for crushing wheels. I already had a few because I need six in total, I believe. And these are right here should have all of the create components plus this. But before we head over there and start fixing, I need to repair my shovel. And I was about to fly over to the XP farm, but I might just trade a little bit with villagers, to be honest. I'm going to buy some bells because I can. Yeah, that's the, that's the only reason. Yep, the shovel is repaired enough. Might have to repair the shovel yet again a little later because I have been doing a bunch of terror for me lately. But it's good enough for now. So let's grab our toolboxes and shulker ones and run over to the gold mine. We definitely need to do a little more love up here to this little cave and maybe like some sort of like holder for the elevator with some girders. But I'll fix that in a little bit as I want to get the farm in first. And as I arrived down in the deep slate area, I had to start digging to fit this gold farm in. And well, we have quite a lot of space to work with. It's not a massive farm, I will admit that, but it's gonna take a little bit to fill this cave with create components all over the place. And I'm thinking we start from the start of the process and finish off at the end with the gold vault that's gonna be right over here in this corner. And well, the first order of business is gonna be even more digging as I need to dig out the space for the vault up here on the roof. This right here should do it, so we just pop in a vault of here, and this is going to be the first little storage here for cobblestone, which we get from the cobblestone up there, but we'll get the cobblestone hooked up the last thing we do. Now, from the bottom of this, we want to bring out a smart chute, which we want to do right here. On the back side, right over here, we'll place our first set of crushing wheels, so that's going to get us our gravel, and then we can do that two blocks down. We can place two more, which I'm not a huge fan of, so we'll actually move those up one block, and that will get us our sand and part of our clay and below this we can get in another shoot and yeah more digging we got to get a little vault in here run that across to right here and i think we want to get in a little bit of logic down here and a little bit of an overflow so if we grab a threshold switch which i might even oh, i do have one of those perfect two redstone links we can put that right down here and then when this is say we'll do a 99 percent and when it's at 10 percent, it will start filling up again and we place one of those and we get one of those as well on the back side of the chute up here and that should turn all of that off then i also want to get a funnel down here which we can place right here and that's going to output into lava or a fire the same thing. And maybe we can even use the gravel right here next to us to get a piece of flint as I, I, I forgot to grab that. Please? 
there we go. Which that is going to output because we, we don't really want to keep the flint. Now, I want to get the major components in first of this whole farm. So we're going to continue on from this without hooking it up. And once we have all of the components, which is mostly going to go over here, then we can hook everything up and then we can have the fun time decorating it all. But the next step is going to be for us to get our sand and our clay from out of this vault and get it transported to right over there where we can turn it into clay blocks. We will start with another vault so we have a goal in mind and this is where we want the clay to arrive. And the clay should be super easy if we just take a belt running over to here and then one going up and that can go in. While the sand is going to be a little harder as we need to run that also on a belt to over here. But that belt also needs to wash it. So I'm thinking we've definitely got to grab some funnels. And we've got to grab some brass tunnels. Where we can have one output there, one output here. Then we have a brass funnel there and a brass funnel over here. And our uh, inputs right over there. I oh, forgot more filter items. Slab, you keep doing this. Back up I go, I guess. And now back down here, we can place a clay ball in there. And we can also get a plate clay ball right over there. And oh, I have the sand here, but I don't have it on me, which I got right there. And we can place that on that one. Perfect. Perfect. And I also think, yes, I'm definitely going to want equal 64 on that one. And now, yes, we are going to have to wash this. So we're going to get up some encased fans, encased chain drives, put that back and probably a few shafts, which that's not the shaft stamp. There we go. As right below this, we're going to need a line of water. And I'm not breaking the thing stamp. Under this, we're going to need our fans blowing upwards. And then we're going to need to get some power to that from below. And to fix that, we can just add a shaft there and then a gearbox. But I want to click this on the side. How do I? Yeah, there we go. Because I want a vertical one, of course. And then some encased chain drives on the bottom of those. Some of the right there, a shaft. And we need to get one more in here. Otherwise, that's going to spin the wrong direction. And that one actually doesn't matter which way it's spinning. Perfect. And we can just fill our way back up here because, well, we are not going to be needing to be down there. I'm going to keep a water source over here for now, I think, just because I can. And I'm going to need a bunch of water for this as the bottom right here is definitely going to be needed to covered with some water. There we go. I will go back a little on what I said. And I do definitely want to get some casings in here right now because this is looking very ugly. And we're going to have to get those on the sides as well. Just to cover that up. But that should be all of that fixed up. And we'll just add in a little floor there so that I don't fall down with a little bit of glass so that you can see it's melting away, I was going to say, but it's being washed. And with our clay bolts now in a vault, we have to compact them into clay blocks. And this is the machine to turn the clay balls into clay blocks. The vault is right behind here. We export the clay balls into the basins. And then we have a metal press pressing it down. And we get clay blocks put on this belt right here. Which is going to move into the next step. Which if you know how to create gold. Which I can show you real quickly. If we search up gold here. We can go to gold nugget. And then we go to washing. And I need to wash red sand. Or you can wash soul sand. But that has a very low chance of giving gold. But if you look at the red sand. You can get them from granite or terra. Terracotta, we're going the terracotta way and the terracotta we get from clay, which we already have all of the methods to get now. So next up is going to be blasting this clay. And to do this, I'm going to want a depot right here. Then we're going to want another four depots over here where we can get a mechanical arm that takes from that one and depots on these four. And that can sit right in there. Again, above this, we're going to need some bars first and then we're going to need some fans right up here. And we're going to get some lava there, but we'll do that shortly. On the bottom of these depots over here, we're going to want some shoots to depot the items and we're gonna want to depot only the terracotta of course which we do just like that i want to convert this into one output and the easiest way to do that is just to add in a two by two vault and then apparently do a little bit more digging because i haven't dug out all i need because that's that's that seems to be the theme around here for now and here what we're gonna need down here is a shaft going over in this direction eh, no can i can i place you this way please thank you which we actually could only have two blocks if you wanted to then we put a gearbox here and here which we flip upwards and some of you might see where this is going and we can also get one in this corner to give that some power eventually as if we use that to get out of there and we run over and grab two crushing 
crushing wheels. This is going to be a crushing setup as this is how we get our red sand from our terracotta. Then just a quick funnel and another depot right at the end over here. And with this here, we'll be moving into the final step of this, which is going to be washing the sand we just got. So I'm going to make a little bit of an old sluice box here and it might not fit the rest of the mine, but I'm still going to do it. We're also going to place in our final vault right over here. Another encased fan right there. And I think the best way would be a depot with one of those outputting and then we have an input right over here and then we take an arm to get that from there up to here which i'll have to admit might not look the best with it grabbing but it could grab down there the shaft is there so it could probably fit between there but that's all of the actual like create components i have to hook it up but we get cobblestone from up here which gets crushed into sand the sand gets washed and the clay that we also get from that gets put into the vault over here which then turns into clay blocks and then oh we need a chest here actually because we can place a casing there and a barrel up there just for a small little buffer we can grab in there and it can output over here oh no this is the wrong way there we go perfect the clay box then gets smelted into terracotta and then the terracotta gets crushed into sand and the sand washed into gold with one water right there perfect and just like the last episode i will be doing a second channel upload with this one so if you want to head over to the second channel and check that out make sure to do it where i'll also be answering a few comments i got on the last video but with the farm slightly explained i had to go and hook everything up so it actually works as well And that should have everything hooked up. I'm leaving my entrances open for now. I'll close them up eventually. But everything on the backside here looks hooked up. Everything is hooked up. I'm going to need this for a little later as we are going to do some decorating over on this side. And we're going to decorate the rest as well a little more. But everything is hooked up and it should all be connected to one source. And I kind of want to test it before we get to decorating. Because, well, if it's running while I'm decorating, I can get some more gold. And um, yeah, I have done one mistake. Uh, I, I won't have gold ingots. I will have gold nuggets because um, I um, I forgot to add in the compactor and I, I'm, I'm just not going to do it. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. It's 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 a feature. Oh, and before we head up there, we can grab two redstone links. Yep, that's going to be perfect. And then uh, do I have any cobblestone? I don't. I have a gold and we'll use uh, deep state iron ore. Sure. As before I head up, I quickly want to add in a switch to this thing so that it turns off the gold in or the cobblestone input whenever it gets full. So when this gets to, we'll, get, we'll, we'll do it 100%. We'll do, eh, we'll do 95. We'll get a redstone link on that. And then a sand, not a sand at all. Deep slate and go. And let's take the elevator up to the cobblestone level. Here we are. Still got to decorate this, but we'll do that once we're done downstairs. As I need to hook up an output from here to, well, over that way. No, actually not looking at the coordinates. It's going to have to be over in the wall over. Oh, I forgot I had haste up here. Oops. It's going to have to be over in the wall over here right here no two more blocks this way no one block back here right here yeah uh okay that's actually pretty easy okay cool that should lock that and that goes to the iron farm perfect this is gonna work out perfectly now i just have to hook it up to all of the other things and ooh, i've just thought about something if i turn off the gravel machine up there that's gonna turn off this so well, it'll be fine so i might as well actually use this to power that and we'll get that over there shaft going this way and a cased right there and uh, oh yep yeah, that's that's working uh uh stop it okay perfect it, it's clearly working oh this is working out perfectly actually i haven't even checked that and this block right here is actually the block that needs to go down to power the underside of all of this but then again now this is hooked up to the oh help oh no 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 not crushing wheels Whew. okay I, I wasn't gonna land in the crushing wheels but um i won't go into it it's too traumatic and this is where we can also speed it up to 256 if you just place a cog right there and that right there cool and this is gonna be all the way sped up and all i should have to do is grab all of the shafts i have and um head down there which we can do through the pile of cobblestone of course perfect oh right the elevator is up there i guess i guess i can just fly out to be fair that's a little faster Whoa. And then down again we go. 
as I am um, I'm digging this up again and going down and okay this is the last shaft here hopefully all of this is gonna work but looking down there those are spinning the wrong way so we're just gonna add in an extra gearbox right here and hopefully that should fix it those are not spinning the correct way which means everything else should be spinning the correct way let's see okay those are spinning inwards that belt isn't spinning we'll have to fix that in just a second that is spinning that belt isn't spinning which is because the bottom belt isn't spinning that fan is blowing the correct way why is then the bottom belt spinning because that isn't spinning because that isn't spinning mm, yes yeah, spinning oh because i know why there isn't anything on that block and now those are going the correct way perfect now everything is blowing the correct way we are just missing a little bit of lava so we'll get us going all the way up to the top and i should have some buckets on me because i need four buckets of lava and entering our steam power plant i just need to swap out these buckets right now you have all the buckets uh Thank you. I just need to swap on one of these out on all of them. And I should have four lava buckets instead. Close the door on my way out. And let's head back down there because it's nighttime and I'm scared of the dark. I'm not, but um, I'm scared of monsters. And oh, I've just gone down here with the lava. I should have turned on the cobblestone on my way down. <laughs> well, we can at least add this in. And I'm sure you don't need the source blocks, but you know, it feels better. Now I, I've got to head back up there and, and turn the cobblestone on. Because we can get that there. And that cobblestone should be going... Uh, is it just too fast? Now I gotta race down there and see if it's working because it, it seemed like it was flying, but I'm guessing it's just too fast and it's all falling. Oh, it looks like it's working. I, I mean, it sounds like it. I also don't get why it does the gravel faster than the, the sand. Oh, that's that's so annoying. So that gravel's just gonna... Oh, what if we clean it up a bit? Will it, will it redo it? Mm, it's burning the flint. Perfect. Is the whole post is actually working? Okay. Oh, we have rad, red sand already. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, we're gonna get the depot and the funnel over here. And I want to set this to 63. Because 63 makes sense. Because that's a whole stack. Exactly 63, please. Okay. I did not expect it all to be working. That's, that's a sight. Oh. Yeah, it's building up on gravel. Uh, just sent out a cry for help in the creator discord. And Polar told me if I just... How do I do this the easiest way? Oh, God. If I just slap a shoot here in the middle, that should fix my issue. I think. Hopefully. I will admit, being a creator has its perks where you can get help without really having to figure stuff out. Which is very, very helpful. We've not made a stack of nuggets yet, but um, I, mean, I guess it's a slow cooker. If you actually do look at the chance of this happening, it's still only a 12% chance, so it's quite slim. Do we have any dead bushes? Oh, we do. I like dead bushes. Hmm, maybe I want to save those somehow. Well, now we have a fully working gold farm, but it's not looking the best. It's not looking bad, but we can definitely make this look a whole lot better. And well, I want to start with this little area right over here, because this is going to be purely decorational. But, you know me I, li I like purely decorational so what we're gonna do is we're probably gonna i'm gonna extend down the middle just one block here and then we'll dig this down eventually almost all the way down to bedrock just because we can and i show you why we want to do that in just a second here but first i want to set up two loops one loop of cobblestone and one of deep slate so let's start with the cobblestone one here where we first of all can take a rotation speed controller and get that in right over here as we definitely want to speed this down. And I want it around 32. Running into this shaft right over here. Which is spinning the correct way. Perfect. That's going to go out all the way to right here. Where I want to take a couple of shoots. And put them. Let's see. We'll start there. And then we'll go up into the roof. In case this one here at the bottom. And the one at the top right there. And then. Ooh. We can add in some windows on those using the R wrench. Then if we take a fan and we put that at the bottom of this right here, that's going to be blowing upwards. Perfect. In here, right here, we'll have a vault, a funnel. Then we have another funnel right there. This one, we're going to limit to exactly one. And then we have an andesite funnel here in the middle that the items are going to be appearing from. And if we make our way upwards here, continuing a shoot line up to right here. And then we go sideways from this. We'll meet with this right here, which we'll actually go ahead and move. As I want to place in a shaft and then connect a shaft up to over here. And that's going to be our loop. Bring some power up here. We'll do that right on this side. And I shouldn't need to be up here that much more. So we'll just go ahead and go down. I'm definitely going to need to run and get some more shafts though, because I am running super low on these we can place one in there one here and a gearbox right here to get some power up to there a stack of cobblestone anywhere here i do not or maybe i do in here i do okay perfect because if we throw this on the vault right here that's gonna let one of those in and up to the belt that's at the top there 
And then it's going to come back down on this side and it's just going to go around and around and around. Which is uh, purely decorational. It's a loop. But it's meant to symbolize cobblestone coming out of the wall here through this andesite funnel or tunnel. And then going up into the crushing setup. Which I have just noticed. This vault is, should be one block longer. Boom. But the cobblestone doesn't really appear from anything. Which is what we got to work from next. And we're down at the deep slate level. And I'm thinking if you just wash the deep slate, you're going to get cobblestone. Um... I don't think that's how it works. I think it's two different types of stones, to be fair. But it can work like that for the sake of the farm. But before we can get to that loop, I've got to head up and grab more shafts because I'm completely out of them. Which, to get started on, we're just going to extend down a little bit of stone right here to maybe there. Moving out from that, we're going to want to bring down a slope, which we can get to right there. And I've just picked something up, I feel like, but I didn't, apparently. Then this can go into this side of the mountain here, where we will grab another belt. And then one more over here. And this is going to move upwards as we need to get it around to like up here and this is really cool i spent a lot of time trying to figure this out in a creative world and i've got something really cool to fit in here but first we've got to make the track which is going to be right up to here so not very far but it is going upwards then right next to this i want to get in a three by three vault this is simply to not move them sideways any bit and still get it up and back the way it came from and this is going to be that complete belt it's quite a long one but it's going to be perfect because now we're right over this hole here in the middle and we're gonna place an item vault right here then jumping down i want to grab a sticky piston and some extension poles for that so we can run back up here or walk or climb and we can add that in and then on top of this no not like that why would i want to place it like that like this, we can add in four poles. Then with a funnel right there and one over here and down there. This is basically our loop completed, except we're going to need a funnel facing this block right here as well. And then remove that. And this is basically the loop completed. So the deep state is going to go down here, go around, and then that pole is going to extend that vault down into that. Okay, so I've hooked it all up and I've done some redstone and stuff over here so that this will spin when this is activated here and the vault will go down because otherwise the whole thing wouldn't work of course but now i need to get first of all the main thing in here with all this detailing and the thing i'm most excited about or actually before we do that first of all we're going to get a tunnel in right over here perfect put some casings on this thing up to there and then if we get metal girders i want to get those on the bottom right here but i want them like standing facing upwards so i should just be able to do that and then the same on this side Yes, that works. Perfect. Then we can get some chains here going up into the roof. And these big chains look perfect for holding these things up. And then I also do want to get a tank here in the back. As we did say that I wanted to look like we're washing these things. And together with that, we can have some pipes that go out like that. And then down into that. And maybe one into the wall, something like that. But now I would need water in here for decoration purposes. Which I could probably fix with just a mechanical pump. Maybe a few pipes. I definitely got to get some inventory space though. We can do maybe right here to just save on space we get a pump in looking we'll do hmm. being very temporary we just need to get something that works for now where one more water source here should start filling that perfect it's not gonna be the fast but it should work out and while that's filling up let's get this elevator in here and well it's not gonna be an elevator but it is using an elevator block i'm gonna want a couple of drills and i think you can see where this is going let's start off here at the bottom to get a drill in right there then we're gonna have a few drills on each side of this and I did want this spinning, but I can't have it going downwards and spinning at the same time because I don't have Create Interactive or anything like that. But what I do have is some shoots, which will go right up to the top right there. Then around that, we get a few vaults in here. One in front of the funnel right there, which is going to work now, but it's not going to work when we make this into a contraption. And that's why we have that vault up there. And you'll see how it all works in just a second. Around this as well, we can extend in some metal girders. as That's going to look amazing to give it a little bit of support and could even be maybe some pipes to transfer the stone up to there. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Or the middle does that. Then we're going to need a few redstone contact blocks here where I'm going to want one facing this way and one looking into that. That's going to be our elevator blocks. And then if we just get up here, I want a few decorational ones. And does that that you are the wrong way? Can I rotate you? Aha, I can. Perfect. And I think that's pretty much it for the drill. I just need my glue, which is right here. We'll grab the top shoot up there if I can reach it. There we go. Then we'll go down to that one. Then I think we're going to grab one across right here. 
And one from there to right over here. Perfect. I'm running out of time for today as I'm going skiing here in just a little bit. But I've got some logic set up back here for this mining drill to go up and down. And I can't really explain this. This is kind of pure luck that it works. But it's basically a timer that times it whenever it gets to either down there or up here. And to get this to work for now, I've just got to go down there and place a redstone contact. And yeah, this looks dark enough. So let's get a redstone contact. Not facing that way, facing that way. Turn it into in elevator one perfect then on this i'm gonna need two redstone links we'll put one right here and um one right here one of these are going to be receiving a signal and that's going to be i think deep slate and gold and then the other one is uh oh does that mean i think the drill is going down yep it's definitely going down that's that's fine then on this side we're gonna have one sending off and that's gonna be golden gravel so now that drill bit is going to go down all the way into the ground that's gonna take a little while as it's not spinning the fastest but it just needs to go down there and clear it where you're gonna have to clear a little more space but i really don't have the time today but once that get down there it should go back up so i guess we'll just have to wait for that while we're for that i might grab some brass catwalks here to create a little border and i've just played around a little bit with how you place these in 1.20 and oh my god i love it so much more and the fact that you can have railings on the stairs oh my god But that makes it a little safer to be around and i want to be back here once it actually gets down into the ground but i want to run and grab some deep slate and some cobble deep slate that is so to do that the fastest way we're just gonna go up here and break that depot right there so that we can get some stacks of deep slate and this doesn't have to be too many and i think actually this will be fine right there as it just needs something to cycle through and i yes we should just be able to pop these on the belt right here and i think it has stopped down there which means means uh, no i forgot to place in the second one so it didn't actually go off okay we'll do we'll do it manually once it should start moving upwards soon hopefully i hope maybe must have been 30 seconds by now surely all right we'll just toggle off by hand and yes it's coming back up perfect and we're about to see this for the first time hopefully it all works the deep state should have been loaded up into the barrel there now and that comes up yes the vault goes down and no deep state goes out of it well, I think I know what I'm missing. I'm probably missing a funnel up there. Mm, yep, definitely was missing a funnel. And where is all my deep stick going now? Uh-oh. But if the logic is all right over here... No, it's, it's not working. Uh, oh, I forgot a gold piece here. Okay, that should trigger it though. Cool. Okay, perfect. Now it would have wait a minute, but we're going to skip that minute. And yes, the drill is going down. Perfect. And the vault is back up there. That should get loaded now. We'll just wait a little bit and then we'll send it back up. Or I do want to see if the circuit actually works on the upside down as well. Oh, yep, that worked. As now it should just be 30 seconds and it should come back up. Oh, yes, it's going. Okay, cool. And wait for it. Wait for it. Okay. That goes up. No. Oh, huh? Oh, wait. This is supposed to sit here, I think. Maybe. Uh, oh, something's not working. Okay, that works now. That's going to go and send that down. And the display comes out perfect. But this isn't working. Okay, that block should be there right now. But the gold farm definitely works. Everything moving around. We're getting gold output over here. And that's absolutely perfect. Now I just need to figure out the actual use for the gold. With a gold farm built, I actually did a little more terraforming on stream. And, um, and well, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of terraforming on stream, to be fair. But I did it in a new place. Because I actually created a cave in here. And for those of you that have been watching my channel for a while, you'll know this is the cave that I've actually gone mining for basically all of my ores, at least in the early game of the Create world. And while well, I've filled it in and created a cave and also this bridge, which I really, really like. And I do have to say, it looks kind of odd where there not being a hole up here. But I actually let you guys decide on what I should decorate this cave with. Because, well, the cave looks really good. But I want to make some sort of a small custom cave by a minute. And most of the viewers on the stream wanted a lush cave. But I really wanted a mushroom cave. And so someone suggested that I should do a lush room cave. We combine the mushroom and the shrooms. Wait, that's the same thing. We combine the mushrooms and the lush. But first to even start this project in here, I need a few blocks. So let's grab some shulkers and I want to head back instantly as I need to do a quick stop over here at the barn to grab a bunch of moss, which, um, yes. Uh, okay. I thought I was almost out of it. Mm, so moss carver can also be good and I don't think I'll need the acelia bushes. And I can finally craft a bag of rice. 
to fully finish the barn. Yeah. Perfect. Now I'm hoping I have a few glow berries. Which, um, ah, yeah. oh, definitely needs a glow lichen. Lily pads could be nice. Um, rooted dirt is always good. But I really, really, really want some glow berries. And looking at these... I want oak leaves in this, so I'm gonna have to go gather a few of those as well. But before we go and grab those, a stack of glowberries. That should work. And all that is left is just to gather up a few oak leaves. Well, I've just realized this is not the shulker box, and neither is that, so I, I grabbed the wrong shulker box. But I'm having to fly out even further now to not render the trees that I break, because I got a PC upgrade, and I could easily play out double the render distance of what I used to, and I love it so much. Except that I have to fly a little further. Now that I do think about it, some mud probably won't hurt the build. Yep, that's not the side I want to see when I get back here. I thought I had lit it up. At least there's no creepers. Now, I do have a vague idea of what I want to do in here, but not the greatest. So I'm just going to start with a small portion of the cave and then we can extend it to the rest. Now, I definitely am a fan of this, and I do want to expand it, but I, I did realize I forgot the mushrooms. I do want to have some smaller mushrooms up here at the top, because I couldn't really figure out how I would want to do them. And then I'm going to have the bigger, more glowing ones below here for, like, a cool little, like, I, I, I don't know what to call it, but it, it's going to be a cool under, under, I, I don't know. But for mushrooms, I actually did build a little mushroom farm in a little cave over here when I was working over in this area. Where, if we just harvest some of these, we should be able to get ourselves a bunch of mushrooms. And, of course, I also have a brown one. Then, do I have a bunch of extra ones over here? No, I don't. Because I was actually thinking that these mushrooms are perfect. But I need a little bit of bone meal to run that, and we really need to fix this area up. We should probably do that today. Especially considering that the one sword that I have there can't keep up with the three spawners. But let's not worry about that right now, as I need some mushrooms, so let's... Put some bone meal down here and let it go. Yeah, it, it's loud, but it works quite well. And quickly look it over here in the GI. Do we have any cool like mushroom variants? We kind of do. Oh, oh, and we have some more here. I'm going to go ahead and make an extra botanist workbench, which should allow me to have a little more fun with these mushrooms. Taking a step back here with a little bit of glow lichen and the mushrooms in there. I think this is looking really good. With the small sample area done, I felt confident with covering the rest of the cave with the same sort of decorations. Going for a very lush vibe and sprinkling in a couple of mushrooms. I did decide to scrap the idea of too many mushrooms in here, but I do think we kind of nailed this place anyways. We got some spore blossoms up here on the roof, making some green particles. We got this little pond down here, lit it up, some lily pads, and just a little bit of greenery. And I think a lush cave works out pretty nicely. We do also have like these mushrooms, but they're, they're not the big mushrooms I planned for, but this cave is frankly a little too small. But I want to move on to the outside of caves, and I booted up my stream to fix the terrain in front of the string factory. This has been a mess since episode one and I really wanted to get something a little nicer in here. And this right here is what we ended up with. And I am really happy with it. I redid the river over here. Still have a little work to do on that. Then I added in a pond and another river cutting down to the real river or well, a little stream, I guess, cutting down to the river. Also decided to connect the path over from the farming area through this area and over to this factory area over here and eventually the city expansion, which I am so excited about. I really, really want to build a train station and stuff over here. So yeah, the path still has to be connected through here, but I'll do that in the future. But for now, I want to get a few more details in here. So I drew up a quick plan to transition the farming area into the town. First thing I want to get into this area is going to be a small little farmer's house. First, coming in with a simple stone mix for some foundation walls, which if we take some mangrove here and extend up the walls... On top of this, I'm thinking we go super simple with a spruce roof. Almost done here, but the shape is looking a little boring, so I'm thinking we extend out a little shed thing here in the front. Yeah. 
Well, I will say the area is starting to come together. I still have a little more work and I do want to get a second building in there, but I'm still not quite sure on the design of that. So I'm going to wait a little bit. So meanwhile, I do actually want to rework this thing. This is my skeleton grinder and there is three skeletons in the side of this grinder and it works uh, very very badly it is it is not very good so i want to tear that down and rebuild it but i also want to incorporate that into the city with its own house and i've started a little bit of material gathering but we still have quite a bit to go so first of all let's head over to the lumber mill and gather up a bunch of different wood types That is actually quite a lot more wood than I thought I would be needing for this build, but that's just as exciting. Next thing, okay, let's make a new stack of mud. And if we flip the page of my storage room, uh, where's my, it's right, yeah, there we go, wheat. And we can make some more packed mud. Keep most of this as normal. And then I think it's the botanist bench. Yes, it is. Okay. And we turn some of that into small packed mud bricks. Yes. Another block that I should just have here is... I have a little bit of pink terracotta, actually. That's a little surprising. Now I need to flip back around because I forgot to grab the dye, which is right over here. This is the one downside by this storage. Otherwise, I'm loving it. It's, it's at least really cool. But we create some pink dye and we can create a little bit more pink terracotta. Perfect. Sure. Joker books is sorted with materials. Uh, nope. Gotta sweep first. Also, I've just thought about it. My bed is floating. And there is such an easy fix to that. Just two copycat panels. And we just put those right below here. Oh, that looks so much better. Anyhow, moving over to the skeleton farm here. I've already prepped the schematic cannon here with blocks for the actual farm transformation. I feel like I've done enough create talky talky today. But don't you worry. You know, there will be that second episode where I go through how it works. But before we can get that running, I need to disable the farm. Or maybe I don't need to disable it, but I'm just going to do it. And then I'm going to dismantle this thing down here. Because I kind of want to keep the, like, mechanical gearbox. Or what, oh, what is it called? I'm being smart. I kind of want to keep that. And I also kind of want to keep the, the sword that's in there. But that's now gone. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a pretty good sword. Actually, that's better than my sword. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that should be enough. It should hopefully repair all of it. I'm I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm actually going to remove the water as well. Because I'm not sure how good it is with water. And well, the new design isn't going to have any water in it. Oh, yeah. Look at that. You should subscribe. But now I am going to let this run. And we can start building. Before this, I'm thinking I'm going to start right over here. And start extending in some mud walls. And why I want to start out here is because I want to bring out some sort of a market stand here. Where if we get a quartz and warped slab and we stack that up back to the house wall, which should... Yes, it's going to be at that height. And I just need to get it down one block and follow over this way. So we get a little market stand. As I'm thinking, this will be a bone bone meal store. Maybe like in... Yeah, I, I, I don't know which door would sell bones, honestly. That's, that's pretty, pretty sinister. But, you know, disregarding that and we can get a little table out here where we maybe can sell some things on that or at least display them. And then we're going to have a house wall extending over this way for sure. Which, why don't we go ahead and plan out for the floor in here? Because I think we go super simple here with just the, some spruce planks. And I'm going to make a little small interior in here at least and try to do that in this city going forward. I, I can't promise anything. It's interiors we're talking about here. With the house here marked out now we can go ahead and extend up some foundations here first of all here i definitely want to add in a little bit of depth here extending this one block out so we're gonna on top of this to get a start on the second story of this building which if we use a line of just jungle planks then we start extending in some normal planks here on top of this this is a build pilot i haven't tried before and i'm excited to test out we grab some of our manger over here. And I think we just got to continue it. I've been doing only red roofs in the city. And I can't really change that now. And I also really, really like it. So I'm going to keep going. Adding in a barn style roof to this spot here. I think it's going to look perfect. If we just get that extended up. And then we can go ahead and connect this up to the wall right over here. Of course, we've also got to decorate the windows up here on the second floor. If we get those in. Then let's see. We can do a spruce trap door on top. We can do some dark oak trapdoors in there. Then a fence gate, just like that. And then we have one on the side here, like it's half open. And I can't place it on there. How would I? How would I even? Uh, no, that's not going to help me. Oh, there we go. 
And then two flower pots, some white roots, and white tulips. Perfect. Let's get some fence gates in here. We'll get a window in on this, of course. A leaf in front of that. I'm probably going to dig up this hill eventually, but I'll leave it for now. And a little window on the backside here. With our first half of this house down, I moved on to finish up the rest of the walls for the main portion. Definitely starting to look good, and I very much like this outcropping. This is something that I definitely want to have in my future cities. More of these outcroppings, and I think to do that, I've got to go bigger on the buildings. I'm learning a lot building this city, and I have been learning a lot from building cities in the past. And for this one, I have thrown my fear of building tall buildings out of the window, and it's turning out so much better than my last city. Anyways, I want to get started on a roof, and I'm gonna use a block palette I have used quite recently, actually in the last episode, now that I think about it. And it's gonna be that one right up there. It's sort of red. It's close enough. We, we do have a pink roof over there. This roof actually turned out really nicely. I first placed scaffolding here to place the windows, but then I kind of liked it, so I'm keeping it, and I think it's gonna work out pretty well. But um, yeah, you're all you're all seeing seeing that, right? That that side is completely missing. So we're gonna start off pretty similar with extending out some spruce here on the bottom, and this might not be add too much space to the inside, but it looks cool on the outside, and that's really what I go for here. Get the leaves in already, why not? And get that built up just like that. It's not gonna be very tall. And then on top of this, we just do a mangrove roof again. Keeping it simple, of course. And windows don't have to be anything really special. And I have had the rule going that I'm not going to add any flower pots to things facing outside of the city. So this is facing outside of the city. And oh my god, I'm absolutely loving this world. Seeing what you are building coming together like this world is coming together for me right now. It's it's amazing. It's such an amazing feeling. And this actually finishes off this building. And if we fly up here, this is going to be how far the city stretches. It's going to go all the way over here. And well, currently we're over there and we have a... A lot of work to do to get over here. Yeah, that's gonna be a project and a half. But future times, future times. For now, I wanna. Hi. Oh, no, 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 no. Hello. Ooh. Okay. No, no creepers allowed, thank you. What I was gonna say is that I want to get ourselves down into the skeleton spawner. Yes, there it is. Just that in a simple roof here, as I'm not going to be using the second story at all. And now we can start grabbing a staircase going down here into the actual farm. And yes, oh, it's looking good. Uh, I probably need to head in there and just see so that all works out. I'm just going to get the staircase fixed up first. Now, I am about to power this on, but before I do that, I actually do want to show how it works real quickly for those of you that aren't going to watch the actual video explaining the mechanism completely. And this is it. So there's a redstone lamp up here that I can unpower and power from the control room, which is that room right there. And then there's some sauce here and a nozzle and a fan. And it's uh, very efficient, which is why I don't want to be in here when it's on because um, it will murder me too so let's get a gear in here and that's gonna be spinning the opposite way at max speed oh yeah that's that's lethal so if we just go ahead and turn that like that oh yep i'm pretty sure you can hear what happened just now and we get bones perfect oh i have actually noticed something is missing back here as we just need a few flames yeah it's um efficient to say the least it's so fast. Wow. I have also done a little more decoration up here. Added in some bone meal and some bones and a flower in the corner here. And also on the desk out here, just to show that it is a bone shop, which still is a little weird. But that is definitely this building done. And with that skeleton farm done, I had one more area that I wanted to touch up on. So I went live and with the help of stream chat, decided to build a fishing hut that sits above a little dock area. And I also finished decorating the area around it and... And everybody say hi to Pondus. And Pondus is my cat. And this is the pond version of my cat. We're working on Tetra Pack to get it to actually look like Pondus. But I am actually really happy with this little fishing gear. We have a little filleting station up here. We got some fishing nets hanging off drying or whatever you do with fishing nets when you hang them up like this. And then down here I have my fishing rod that I sometimes use on streams. And I got a little boat and a little shed and even some notes on 
how much people lost betting on streams. Today, I want to take my city I have in my create world and expand it, adding another seven houses as well as building a train station. And I'm thinking we should take this at least all the way out to that orange line over there, which is going to be a pathway leading down to this part of the city where we're going to build a train station. And I'm actually really, really excited about the train station. But before we get started on all of that, I think I want to redo parts of the old one because I don't think it makes too much sense of there being dirt everywhere. There should be an actual road. And I'm definitely a strong believer in not doing something too complicated when it comes to pathways. So I'm thinking we just grab some mud here. And let's talk about it a little more because we're probably going to be needing it. I'm also going to have to go get a little more wheat as I definitely want to have this into packed mud form and then mud brick form. And I will be turning that into slabs and I don't need the most of the mud brick perhaps. So maybe that will do. The other block we're going to need is a bunch of deep slate and okay, I have a stack in my storage. Question is up at the garage here. Do I have any more? I probably do. Yeah. With the block palette picked out there, I started laying the new road at the already established part of town to get an idea and a feel of how the road would look. Once I was happy with how the road looked up there, I moved on to continuing the same road design to the edge of the city all the way over at the skeleton farm. This is looking so much better than what we had going on before here. It actually looks like this road is a little more supported and not just a raggedy dirt road. I did decide to skip on the mud parts though because the roads are a little too narrow for that. I think they would have looked great but the roads had to be a little wider than they are and well I could probably have them in this area here and I might still put something in the middle here but I'll get that in later once I have market stands and all of that stuff because yes we will be adding market stands. But now we have prepped the ground and I want to get some houses in here because I am so excited for them. And well, to get houses, we need to start doing some material gathering. And well, you know where we are heading first. We got our shulker boxes and we're heading over to the wood farm to, of course, gather up a bit of wood. And a box full of some wood materials and a quick nap on the bed with a cat. Oh, hello, Jelly. Now, do I store... Okay, I have a lot of sand. And I don't know where I store sandstone. <gasps> Wait. Is... Is one of these filled with... Ah, sandstone. Perfect. Uh, I'm definitely gonna need some smooth of that and just some regular. Which, if we take that regular over to the mason bench here, we can turn that into small... Where are you? Small sandstone bricks. Perfect. And then we also grab a little bit of sand. And I wish I could run and use my... Oh, I only have one stack of these. Actually, more. Which means we can take a trip over here to the mushroom ranch. And... Oh, we already have a little bit here. So, let's grab up a few stems and some mushroom blocks while we're at it. Oh, well, we're gathering up the mushroom blocks and we'll grab the stems while we're at it. And yep, three stacks is definitely going to be enough for us. As if we had to the botanist bench, I'm presuming. Yes, we can make some dark, smooth red mushrooms. And we can make some smooth red mushroom blocks. Perfect. Another thing that I think we might have is some red terracotta. We have five. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make a little more of that. As we can craft 53, that should be enough. And we'll turn a few of these into terracotta bricks for the future. I've got materials right over here now, prepped to start some building on these front buildings here. But before we do that, my shovel is very broken, so I'm gonna head over to the spider farm and slap a few spiders. You know what might be faster, actually? Just heading over to the villagers and trading a bit with them. Yeah, because I have a lot of iron stocked up. Because now with the new PC, I've been able to actually run my iron farm while actually playing in the world and still recording or streaming or doing whatever I'm doing. Well, tools all repaired, and I think we're ready to get building. Let's first of all move a few blocks out of the way here so that we can get the first building in. Grabbing some deep state here for my boxes, and we can start this first build. And well, I didn't think about the road when I was making this the first time, so we'll see how this turns out, but I, I think it's gonna work out. Since this is the first building of the expansion and it's a little bit away, it's important that I get this one right. So this is what I dug up with the shape, and then I'm thinking we take these pillars up, maybe this tall maybe one more which is good there but if we're standing down here it's gonna be a little tall so we take away the top one and i think this is gonna be a good height for ourselves and with some sort of a height figured out here let's start adding in the walls between the pillars 
This is definitely a solid foundation. So if we get ourselves up above this and in the front here, I definitely want to add in a little bit of depth this side. So let's extend out a little bit of spruce before we already have the birch planks on us here where we can start extending that in here for a start of a second story where we can get that two blocks up. And if we add in a little bit of dirt here to help us out, we can start adding in some stripped birch logs on top of this. Skipping over our windows, of course, and well, I think you already know what's gonna come in this little gap. Cleaning up some of our dirt here on the second story. We have a very big gap here, but taking a step back from this, I think this is the start of a really good shell. Or well, the start of a really good house. Uh, with the shell being what's done. But with the shell being done, I wanted to move on to the roof to get that in before we went back down and decorated the first and second story. I'm a big fan of this hut here on this side, but I have to fix the side of this building as it's still wide open. Something we bring in some dripstone here at the bottom, and then we couple that with some mud. And yep, let's bring this up. So here we got a nice shape filling up that hole and let's start getting a roof in here where I'm thinking we can grab some mangrove and maybe couple that with some netherrack. This could result in something new here and I'm definitely willing to try it out. Maybe some supports on the edges there. And how do we like this? Yes, that's definitely a nice roof. And for those of you that's wondering why I'm building only red roofs, it's because the whole city has red roofs. It's 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 just a theme. So let's get a door in here and some windows. Or we can grab out a few details, get some dark oak shutters. Not up there. I was thinking more here. And then maybe a spruce trap door on top of that. Where we also can throw in a couple of leaves. Now that we got most of this first house in here, I just gotta run around a little bit and Decorate. And if you predicted this opening right over here to be a bay window, you were of course correct because, well, who doesn't love a good old bay window? Oh yeah, perfect. Although we already have quite a lot of spruce, so what if we do try to switch it out for some oak instead? Which gives us this instead, and yeah, I think I like that more actually. And flying back here real quick, yep, that house definitely is going to fit in. Now I just have to connect houses between that and then all the way over there. Uh, there's, there, there, there's a lot of houses. But we can't celebrate that yet because it's only one house. And well, we have six more to build and a whole train station. Yeah, the train station is definitely going to be coming here soon. I just really wanted to get some houses in here first. And over here in my boxes, I'm going to grab a few barrels and maybe not for the reason you might be thinking. I also want to grab up some sand materials. As next up here, let's bring in a little bit of spruce like this. And then, no, that's not going to work. We need to pop up on the top side of this and place some barrels facing upwards before grabbing our sand stuff here and starting to add in a wall using that. And hopping down, we get the nice side texture of the barrels and the bottom one, which is also a really nice texture, to overlay the building a little bit over the street. And I really, really like that. And with a few more details here on the front, like a door and some trap doors and this display sign up here, I think the bottom floor is looking good. Making our way up here, we can start some decorations on the windows. Where over here, I'm thinking we grab in some copper scaffolding as a window and some fence gates up in the corners right over here to support the future roof. And we can't forget about a little flower pot. A little flower pot. And with a style down here in the front, I went around the back to add in the three remaining sides. So with our walls in, let's start working on a dark oak trim yet again. Inside of these here, we can stack up some spruce and get some mango trap doors as a window in that and follow that all the way up to the top. And we just duplicate that right over here. Then realizing I forgot the roof block itself with our red mushroom, red terracotta, and yeah, that's it. So let's start adding that in, stretching this across over here. 
And then as we're moving upward here, I think we're going to start transitioning away from the terracotta. We can think a little bit ahead and add in a dark oak stair there for a roof window. And like I was saying here, introducing more and more of the brighter blocks as we move upwards on this roof. And then another thing I do want is definitely these roof windows with our light gray glass. And then we just put some ladders in front of that. Then connecting up our trim here on the top using a just line of dark slabs, dark oak slabs. Then moving up here, I think we can extend in a campfire on this level. We get some trap doors around that, just like we've been doing all over the place. And a slab on top of that. And then why don't we just extend this up one more block and then get the second campfire in. Just for something like this. Which flying down from here completes our second building in the city expansion. And this has me thinking. Thinking. I kind of want to add some functionality to this and yep that means some create components and what if we make a cobblestone farm in this one and then have it output bricks over in this house I think we're gonna need a third house as well though but I definitely want to get through this house quite quickly as I am very eager to get started on our train station so if we grab ourselves a few white blocks I'm thinking this will look good as our foundation on the back side here, I think we should add in some sprues for perhaps a little shop area, which we can top off with our crimson nylium. Now, next up, we gotta get some walls on here where I think some jungle and terracotta is going to work great. With most of the build in here, I want to add in a tower to the corner, which I used mud for the majority before putting on a tower top. Again, coming in with our crimson nylium for a roof. With the tower done, I now want to head back to the main building here where I just have a simple mangrove roof to add in before we finish off a couple of details. And with that, the first three buildings of the city expansion are completed. But they are lacking a little bit of functionality. So before we go ahead and run over and get started on our train station, which oh, I'm still so eager, I actually want to add in that brick function we talked about earlier. So let's grab my toolboxes and let's get to work. So I'm thinking we start in the sand house here and I, I'm not going to be needing my pipes, although I probably will need the rest of this. So what do we start with? I think we start ourselves off with a belt right up here. Here, which will go over to this point then i have a good idea of how i'm gonna get the cobblestone out of here because this has to be a cobblestone farm because that's gonna be our first step but i'm gonna need that to go into that one and up over into the roof then just building up a simple cobblestone farm Before we can finish up over here, I've got to head over into this house and we can even enter it and let's get ourselves up to the ceiling up here where I actually want to remove this window. As right over here, I want to add in a shaft uh, with a mechanical belt reaching from there to if we maybe stack out some shafts from there to that one. Yeah, that's going to be good. And if we're back here, let's grab a weighted ejector and two funnels. Perfect. And I have a feeling you guys know what's about to happen if we add in a little temporary bridge i think we break this block yep we find one of those we're gonna want you to target that block and sit over here oh yeah that's gonna be cool and then if we break this block we can get a barrel in right there with a funnel on that and we'll set it to output let's say 16 but that finishes up this side and let's move on to this building so we're gonna grab our crushing wheels and i'm just realizing i'm missing two so let's just quickly fill in the recipe to get another set of those yoink as now we'll be able to do here grabbing some shafts and gearboxes if i place a gearbox here and here we can flip those to look upwards and then we place two crushing wheels like this and that's going to get us gravel and then we do the same thing right over here and we're about to leave this building, but I do want to add in a chute right here. If we grab a list filter and we put flint on that, because I, I don't have any flint. So now we can... Okay, well, I'm a little too short. Now we can put that on there. And we get a polished deep slate and... Oh, this is why I always carry the flint and the steel. Because you never know when you need it. Perfect. But now that we have our sand and a little bit of clay, we are moving on into the third house. Where I added in the washer and then the smelter. 
And well, here we have this mess. Yeah, it works. It's gonna eventually end up down here in this vault. And uh, it looks all right. Still have to make some interiors in here. But uh, I'll do that on streams. I'm actually gonna make some interiors. Then probably fix up the old town with the interiors. But we're not quite yet done with it as it still needs power. And I'm just thinking here, where would it be a good spot? Flip this one around and we can take it from there. Don't want to come down in the middle of the room. So I do want it hugging the wall here. So we're gonna extend one more box out but we can get it down underground here and oh that is the perfect level oh that's nice because if we just go ahead and break that well, well actually we'll pre prepare a little bit here get our speed controller and we get a large cogwheel and we can place this one facing well not that direction that way and we break that and we replace it with that perfect we can then speed this up to 64 or 256 i mean and run it all the way back and power mm, wrong way though let's have a look if this over here is also spinning the wrong way or not it is also spin the wrong way so we just flip around the rotation then i just have to go find it and i think actually this door might help me for once oh uh down here oh there it is perfect and oh it looks like stuff is happening so that's all working is this working we're seeing clay means it's working perfect oh orange glass uh, do we have brick already we do oh it works but with that brick form completed we have to do a little bit of material gathering because it's time for the train station ouch and for this first one here i'm just gonna be running through the storage actually because i gotta head up to the building factory real quick where i definitely didn't forget that i am automating terracotta so we're gonna grab a few stacks of that turning a bunch of this into bricks and well actually keeping a lot of it for other stuff you also do need a little bit of red terracotta here and with a little bit i mean a stack and turn that into bricks and put it in a box oh if you're wondering i've already uh, done a little bit of uh, material gathering i do a lot of material gathering on here so it's boring showing all of it and i think i have most of the remaining blocks because yes i do have a netherite ingot and is it chisel stone that you make an old stone bed? It is indeed. Perfect. And since I have been gathering materials for a little bit, and not only gathering blocks, as I also built a few market stands in the city expansion. And I still have to give them a little bit of love and something to sell, but it's a great start. Yeah, I, I, I got really tired on stream last night and I just had to go take a nap and um, it was a long, nice two hour nap. Anyhow, bricks have been producing. Oh, I need to add a threshold switch to this. But for now, we can at least grab a few stacks here and turn that into bricks. Maybe I should even add a compact to this as well, because we are getting a ton of bricks here. Now, this should be most of the books we need, but I am missing one thing, and that's limestone. And I am afraid that I am out of limestone, which, um, yep, it looks like it. So that means we have to go mining. Or well, running up to the drill here, do we have any limestone in the storage? Um, we do not. And there is actually a way to make a limestone farm so why don't we expand a little bit on the build factory and make a small little maybe temporary but a small little limestone farm in here um this corner back here should do perfectly so i'm thinking we go super simple here some in-case chain drives and some mechanical drills in front of that realizing of course that i usually don't have everything to make a farm on me as i need a few blocks we're also gonna need a bucket of lava and Oh, no, wait, no, there you go. And if we take a trip down towards the farming area here, I need a bucket of honey. And, um, how would I, how would I get this easily? Ooh, I have an idea. What if I take my pipes? Please tell me I have a spout. I do have one spout. What if we place that there? That will fill. Can I just throw a bucket under this? No, oh, it's filling slowly. Right, because there's no, hmm. Right, I'm finally getting some honey here. Can we get one more, maybe? I just need one more, please. Oh, so close. Wait, okay, it's not over yet, I don't think. I think. Honestly, can't tell. It looks like there's more in there. Give it to me. Mm. Okay, while we wait for that to maybe work, I want to go back to the storage room and try to do it a little more actively. As I had to take a honey block out there to put a depot in. What if we just try smelting this? We put it in this one. Throw a coal under there. And with the spare bucket... Oh, that... Okay. I Maybe I should have done that from the beginning. All right. Now we should have everything we need here. So I'm thinking we have an output barrel maybe here. Uh, actually, I'm going to do that. We have it all the way over here, I guess. And then we do hoppers into that. And if we're throwing lava up here, do we get what I think we get? Limestone? 
Yes, perfect. And power shouldn't be too hard if we do that. And then we get a shaft to be placed there. Get a gearbox up on that one. Without falling in the lava here, Stam, preferably. Oh, wait, now that's not gonna work. Mm, what if we just do this instead? We remove this block and we put that there. Sure, no one's gonna notice that. So grab that down. Another gearbox and our encased chain drives to power that. Now I just have to figure out that we can turn this on and off without... Oh, it's off because that's flipped. All right, there we go. So, yes, we're getting limestone. Perfect. Quick little farm. Gotta love that. So, now I just have to wait a little bit. I've got all of the limestone gathered up now after a little bit of waiting. And let's get over to the build site. And I'm thinking that this area right behind here, where we already have a track, is going to be where our train station is going to go. And I wanted to get a plan for how this was going to look. So, I hopped into Fresco to draw up a quick sketch. And with a plan down, I got to dig in to clear out the area. Well, got myself here a nice dugout area, and there is a lot of room to play with. But to get a little bit of a better idea throughout this thing, where do I have those? We gotta grab some train tracks, and let's give grab our cut tough as well to mark out some platforms. So my plan is to have two tracks going in here, and I'm thinking we grab the second one starting from there. And what if we do, let's see, one, two, where do we want this? Would we want it all the way over here? Because then, one, two, yeah, we get three blocks. I think that's going to be nice. And then we can run it all the way into the tunnel over here. And eventually that will connect outside of the train station. Um, Just because I don't really have the space. But that's fine. With that at least down, I'm thinking we can start a platform right here. Which we can continue all the way over into the wall over here. And then we can do something like this perhaps for the platform going off there. Connecting this back around where we give ourselves something like this. And then I'm we might as well add this in now and extend down the staircase to get under the tracks to the opposite side. And ooh, I gotta actually do a little more digging here to get the bottom of the pathway in. Or we take ourselves up on this side up to here. And we're on the other side. Perfect. I'm thinking while we're at it here, let's go ahead and grab our limestone. And I think I need a little bit of spruce planks. As this wall right here is gonna be spruce. And then the rest down here is going to be limestone. And there we go, a tunnel filled with limestone. And now let's get working on the train platform on this side instead. And that that's stone stamp. Good job. We need that. We need the cut tough. Which I think we can go ahead and fill in from here all the way over to around this point. Then over here is going to be our entrance where we can do it a little shorter there. And then we can make it a little wider for a little like platform out here. And then some stairs to get ourselves up there. Well, this floor plan here is coming together really nicely. And I think we've got a better view on now where we need to build around this and i'm thinking over here is we're gonna put it in that tower with the clock on top of it and then i want an elevator in that to get us to the top <laughs> okay cobblestone that, ah, that's so funny that's actually really really cool to just see the cobblestone flying over anyhow i want that to be an elevator up to the top part of the city and maybe even we can make a garden like behind the train station on this level where you can kind of wait for your trains that might be a cool idea but i started working on it a little bit and i want to get in the the deep slate here next to the tracks and I could get my train over here to do the parts under the tracks but I'm a little too lazy I'll get it here later to fix this and that's looking a whole lot better added in our train station here and we're gonna put a display link on that eventually but we don't have the board in yet and now let's get ourselves started on some walls here and even my pickaxe is in the wrong spot it's a little odd but I do want the blocks like this and I'm thinking we go pretty basic here with just a brick pattern that leading up for the main portion of the wall now this is actually starting to look like something this is coming together really nicely but before we go ahead and give that a little more love i want to connect this here to the tunnel and i'm thinking we can start with some metal girders shooting from the wall and then meeting up to a pillar around this point Doing the exact same thing right over here. And using a few temporary blocks here, we can get two more facing like that. And yep, made it. Doing the exact same thing on this side, of course. Now up here, I'm thinking we can start adding in a crimside roof. Roof. 
Now we got a quite cool roof going on here. And I do want to add in a little bit of glass right here. Because I absolutely love the look of train stations that have this bit of glass. And they're curved like this. We'll even go ahead and extend that one more block down. Yep. Before we take some of our polished deep slate here and start creating some support for that. Then running this one right here all the way over to the tunnel. And the same thing on this one right over here. We can finish it off with something just like that. Then if we take our cut and the scythe and we'd add that in right here. All the way over into the wall. And like this all the way back. And we get a little bit of a tunnel bit and... And, uh, yeah, maybe so the train doesn't, like, if it's raining or something, it just doesn't push it into the station. Honestly, I don't really know, but it looks pretty cool. At least I think so. We're gonna come back to this area a little bit later, though, when we finish up this tunnel. As well, it needs a few more details. With that side roof in, I felt a little inspired, so I wanted to get the main roof in, and I went back to the first part of the city to get some inspiration, where I grabbed some polished limestone to create a border, and then I filled in the roof using a mix of crimson wood and with the roof in it looks something like this and i'm starting to like it back here i also added in that little terrain and maybe we'll turn this into a garden later kind of really want to do that and uh well this part of the build really looks half but we'll work on the tower in a little bit as before we do that i want to work on detailing the front because um uh, this is pretty bad and so why don't we start with the windows where i'm thinking we take some jungle stairs and some jungle trapdoors like this and then on the inside here we start with some glass and we'll hop around to the inside and fill that in in just a second as we do the same right over here and ooh, I, I i really got a light up in there then on the outside of this we put some ladders like this and i'm thinking we get a little overhang here flip some spruce support down place those above the ladders and then we can place our spruce trap doors not there on the nope not there right there and we flip these up, which gives us some window details. Yeah, I like that. And well, this entrance also needs a few details, so we'll stack up some dark oak logs here on the sides. Then I'm thinking some dark oak stairs right here. Slabs, that's what I've got on me, and the lodestone right there. Then mangrove slabs right here and above this. Bring in those up one more blocks and a row right there. I think that's pretty good. If we grab our crimson palisades, which I already had in my inventory, we can get that in there. And what do you think of that as like an open gate door thing and we add that in where it would close up to two mesh fences and i think we got a pretty good entrance but for this next part of the city i'm yet again gonna have to do a little more material gathering and i think we should throw ourselves right into it and yes okay i have netherrack up here do i have more than 32 no do, do i only have 32 netherrack of all the things the, the, the item I'm out of is netherrack. Well, luckily, netherrack is a block that is not very hard to gather up. So we just have to pop into the nether. And we can get to mining. And uh, yeah, this is not going to take very long. This right here should definitely be enough. While we're here in the nether, I should probably head over to a crimson forest and just gather up some more crimson nilium. And there looks like there's a lot up here. Perfect. Because I need a bunch of this for a few more roofs. And yep, this is actually going to be a perfect inventory oh, okay oh, okay don't look in your inventory while flying in the nether stam it's been a lot of this normal but we're also going to turn a bunch into netherrack bricks and a few into where are they again small netherrack bricks perfect the rest I, I guess we can store for now and while we are on the theme of nether stuff let's craft this into crimson nilium sod blocks which means that we can turn them into stairs. And I'm gonna need about a stack of stairs, a stack of blocks, and then a couple of slabs. Last time I got too few of these and I had to go back to the nether, so I made sure that I didn't run out of them this time. Before we head for another trip at the... Oh, no deep states. Do I have any deep states sitting over here? 26 and a lot of this deep states, which is actually gonna be quite useful now that I wanna use it over at this thing. Let's see, what do we have in here? Where is our etched? My blind? Oh, there they are. Perfect. But the regular deep state only got me far enough, so we gotta grab a little bit of regular deep state right over here. And where is it there? There we go. Cool. To, of course, create... Let's see. Let's get some polished and let's get some regular deep state bricks. As much fun as it is gathering blocks at the storage room, I've gotta say the lumber mill is definitely my favorite place to be. So for the second time today, I'm spending a little bit of time here gathering up even more wood blocks. 
another successful trip in the lumber mill. Oh, God, do I love that build. But back at the storage house, I had a few more things left to gather, so I just ran around for a little bit doing that. And with the material gathering done, I headed straight back to the city to get started on the first new building of the second part of this city expansion, where I yet again wanted to add in a building with a tower, fitting that in in between the old city and the expansion. And it's definitely looking good. I'm thinking we need one more building in somewhere around here. Maybe one over here. And um, yeah, right. I did a little bit of work over here. We're added in a tulip garden on a stream. Or a little waiting area if you're waiting for a terrain to arrive down at the station. However, we have more building to do. I can't just sit around on benches all day. So let's grab some tough here from my inventory. And let's get to building up some foundations for yet another build. And it looks like I've stumbled across the old well of the village that I used to sit here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and cover that up. Getting ourselves back up here on the foundation, we've got some walls to build in. And I want to start with a little outcropping here, extending in some white terracotta, which we can prep some leaves on the front of this. And why don't we get the flower pots on that already? Grab in some dandelion, or a dandelion, and a dark oak forest. No, Stam, you do not have a dark oak forest on your build. It's, it's, it's just one single sapling. However, adding in some windows on top of this, and some walls in between, we can incorporate a little bit of spruce into the side and a gate up here in the middle in front of the windows and to finish it off here we pop on a roof on the short side here let's get a spruce outcropping and we'll do one on the other side as well why not then bringing out some beehives here. I want to stack those in towards the middle here so that we don't see that little slot down there. And we'll do the same on this side. Or we can bring out a few brick blocks here and start creating some walls on top of this. On top of here, I'm thinking we take some inspiration from that building over there. Where we can start a trim with oak here. Some trapdoors and slab mix going all the way along. Before we start taking ourselves up a little bit. Up here above this, I'm starting to incorporate some sod blocks here. Or well, the crimson nylium. And then we mix that in with a little bit of our mangrove. Towards the top here, we start with our dark oak again. Taking that a cross and finishing it off with a slab right over here. And then we bring out our bars like we have on most of the buildings. And we add that across. And of course, you can't forget about a few spikes. And this regarding the scaffolding right there in the middle. This build is looking really good. Or um, facade of a build. So I better just get to work here. Placing in even more blocks to get the other three sides placed in. With the door up here, I decided to connect all of these three houses here through a common gate walk as I was going to have a staircase up here. Catwalk, by the way. Um, and one over here to access these two. And I thought, they're so close, so why not just connect all of them and you get a little shortcut down to the market area. But with this house here done, I definitely got to work a little bit on the path as it's going to come up to somewhere around here. And then around this building and follow this down here to the train station. And now we have a path that leads around from this area over here around to the main path and out to the rest of the world. I will wait on this one down here as well. We are missing a building here and right over here. But before we get those two buildings in, I want to finish up our train station because I already have all of the blocks gathered up. And well, there is still quite a lot to do. This is in shambles. So let's grab our packed mud and start with our tower base. And we're going to start right down here 
in the front where I've already kind of marked out where I want the tower to go. I just haven't started building it yet. I think I'm at a height here where I want to grab our cut blank mud and extend that around to kind of mark out that this is the end of the mud part. And it definitely looks a little odd, but it's going to start looking a whole lot better soon. Yeah, at least I hope it will. I do want to grab some polished air on the bottom and a block on the top and then add in two trapdoors like this for a window. And we'll add this in on all of the windows here. That definitely gives it a few more details and I'm starting to like. I will admit it is a little barren, but I do think what is going to come on top of this is really really going to complement it but before i want to finish off the tower i want to get this side building in we're starting off a foundation that leads up into a brick part similar to how i did the main structure of the train station and then i've left some very big gaps here to add in a few windows On top of the side building, I want to bring out some limestone and get some stairs here on the edge. And this is going to be a little tricky here, I think, as I need to get or I want to get some sort of like a mosaic in here. And I got some good lace terracotta and some gold blocks. Something in the gold goes in the middle. And uh, now I have to struggle through placing these, I think. Yes, that's how I want that. Oh, boy. And after a few tries, finally got that right. The side definitely does look a little odd, but I'm going to prioritize the side that looks outside. And what we now do is enclose this by maybe making something like this. And two more and a stair in the middle like that. Which, yeah, that definitely looks good. However, what if we grab a few, we grab what? Four of those and hold our polished cut limestone in our opposite hand and we can place that down here and get a little more rounded shape. Yeah, that's going to be nice. And there we go. Looking good. Um, almost. Just gotta fill this in real quick. Now back up here on the tower where I have said it before, but this is going to be a clock tower. And I am really, really excited for it. I do already have a clock in the city and it's like behind that building over at the town hall. And it looks really cool and I want to try to make a bigger one. So let's use some deep slate. I was going to say, but this is dark oak stem to create a frame. Then on the inside of this, we can add in some dark oak in the corners, some stairs to round this off, and then some trap doors to just cover all of the sides with dark oak which definitely leaves us with a round shape and if we take some smooth quartz block now we can add that in around this of course we've got to go and leave the block here in the middle untouched as i want to add in a clockwork bearing so that we can get a working one then we can extend out one two metal girders using a little bit of scaffolding here we can get up and get that in and we're gonna have to temporarily remove this so that we can put a flower pot on top of that. Cool. And can't forget some glue, of course. And I already make those into things. I think so. That means I can place that back. Perfect. And so with a style down for one side of the clock tower, I'd wanted to replicate this on the three other sides. Now, I've also done a little bit of work on the inside here, and it looks a little more like a train station, but this area up here still looks a little wonky. So, I want to grab some andesite stuff and start adding in a staircase leading upwards, and then we can transition into some catwalks for this little corner over here, and get ourselves one block higher up. Up here, we can continue with the catwalks themselves, continuing them over this way and around, as I'm thinking these three here will be an elevator and if we're up here on the top side let's add in some andesite slabs right here and get ourselves a redstone contact on this block and oh right i can rotate this oh why was i finicking with it so much there we go let's get some girders in on the side of this and i've already done a little bit of create up here but i gotta do a little more as uh, so first of all we get the looking like that and then we add a cast iron hull to the middle of this okay right just like that then i just got to grow Grab a few more shafts to get down to the display board. Which is where we are down at now. And uh, if I can place this all right, we can get our 
this belay board right in here. Now I'm actually really, really eager to hook some power up to this. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And ooh, I'm just realizing that there's a few casings missing right up here. Cool. I do however quickly gotta head back over the city to my storage room and grab a few more shafts as I am running out. And perfect. Digging this way should leave me at the power source for the whole city, hopefully. Although I, I'm not sure how far it is. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Let's grab this all the way back around the bend. And oh, is that enough speed? That is the big question here. Okay, wait, hold up. Grab our display link. Put that there and this down here. Okay, definitely spins fast enough. Perfect. Is it a good speed for the elevator? Oh, the clocks. Oh, yes, that's so cool. I uh, might have to change some settings on those though. Is it an elevator or this? Okay, it's pretty fast. But yeah, I think I'm going to stick with it. Adding in some bearers up here, taking us a floor down, and we can walk down into the train station, under the platform, and aboard our train. Perfect. I've also just remembered that if I grab some limestone, I have copycat steps, which these windows can get a little more detail under them. Yep, this definitely feels like the right thing to do. Perfect. Now, final thing for this train station, this top here is so so flat so i definitely want to add in some pillars first then we got to connect between these with some trap doors and stairs a few slabs just like that and then we can get across here in the middle with some blocks to cover that up and this obviously looks really odd so let's also start on a roof on top of this which will be built out of basically just mangrove here And with that tower top done, this train station is completed. Or, well, at, at least almost. I, I I need to touch up on that tunnel. Um, la, 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 la. Definitely not pushing it till later. I was in a build mood after finishing the train station, so I moved on to completing a small little house above the train station. Now that I'm done with this house here, I have the limits of where I can put a path in to get ourselves down to the elevator. And something like this definitely works to bring ourselves up into the city. And I, I, I don't know how many times I mentioned it at this point, but ah, oh, that's so funny. I need, I need more of those. But with that done, I still have one more house to finish off. And to start the final house of the city expansion, I want to bring up a deep safe foundation, which we can top with mud. Before we pop on some details here, we bring in some dark oak, and then with some cut scoria walls, we can connect those up to the rest of the build. Bring these up two more blocks, and then walls in there, and connect the front here. Where do we get a middle point? Mm, doesn't look like it, so we just extend those in there, and they'll not be in the center. Oh, some people are gonna hate that. Then what we do is we start a mangrove roof on top of this, extending that down to this level, and in front of these things and back up on the other side and after that little outcropping there i just had some details to finish up and with the details done all that was left was to add in the roof and i went with a netherrack roof for this one and walking up into the town here, this building really completed this little area here, connecting it over here, and I do want to make a shop front here eventually. I just don't have the time. I'm going away, and I'm literally running out of time to record this. Luckily, I have an editor now, so I will actually get this video out on time. Without him, I, I would have been screwed. But I still have this massive area that looked really bad, so I booted my stream up to give it a makeover. And oh my, do I think this turned out absolutely amazing. I am planning to put in interiors in all of these houses. Like I've said before, I'm not going back on that. I just don't have the time. So I've put signs in them so I remember what I want to put in the stores. And then I'll make the interiors once I'm back from my skiing trip. But I have this pathway here that leads down and to the main pathway or the pathway outside of the city. And eventually I'm going to want some buildings on this slope. But that's future expansions. But this allows us to also get down to the train station without using the elevator. And finally, connect the Kale Factory to the rest of the road network. The path used to end like below here. It ended right here and it was connected through the village pathways. And finally, it's connected. Um, how, how did this... Um, yeah, uh, 
Perfect. But I'm not quite done yet, and I have a little more time to work on something, and this has been an area which I wanted to do since I started this project. And I've already made one interior on stream, and it's this butcher shop here. Um, currently it has a uh, little belt running right through it, and it will probably keep on having that, but this is to power the cobblestone farm. Anyhow, there's a bacon, and there's pork shops over here and uh, some more on some plates here and in this little backyard i want to have some pigs in a little pen and um yeah they're they're probably gonna be slaughtered but this is minecraft and they're gonna stay there forever so it's fine and um i i've added it in and why do i sound sad because well i i forgot to click the record button <laughs> it's fine it's fine we have the two pigs they're chilling in the pen i added in a little roof back here and um, they're totally going to be alive forever. Nah, we don't look in there, no. But with that mishap over, I just had one more thing to finish off the city expansion. And that was to run around and add a little bit of vegetation, a little bit everywhere. And well, if I'm going to be honest, there was very little vegetation to add because I've been filling this area very, very compact. And the only area where I could think of adding vegetation more now would be this area down here. And well, maybe up here. But I'm going to cover this in houses eventually and build something else down here. So it's definitely a waste of time for me to cover it in vegetation now. And well, that means that this city expansion is completed. And I think it turned out a lot better than the last one. I I definitely think it's the fact that I'm learning and I am a huge fan of how all of these houses came together. I think I planned this one out more and a little better. I'm super excited once all of these houses have interiors like this one, but that's gonna have to wait a little bit. A few weeks ago, I transformed this garbage into a little fancier garbage, but it's still quite bad. So today, let's fix that by building a working port equipped with both a wool and dye factory. Leave a like if you're excited and please subscribe to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And well, I won't say it looks terrible right now, but it looks very handmade. And um, we don't have to talk about the fact that it's completely floating and not connected to the bottom at all. Um, and it's, it's, it's fine. And I'm going to definitely want some foundations here to get our factories all. And to do that, I'm going to need some chiseled stone, some smooth stone slabs can't hurt, cobblestone as well. And I'm going to go grab more, I think. And then we can also grab a bunch of just regular stone down here. Turning a bunch of this into stone bricks, because I think I definitely want to use a lot of that. And okay, we have enough cobble to at least get this project done. Before we head over there and start building, there's one more thing I'm going to need to grab, which is definitely going to be some gravel over from the building factory. Why is there cobblestone in here? Okay, uh, I'm just going to leave it there. But I don't actually have a plan to use the gravel as I want to take some dirt as well. And together we can make coarse dirt. Got to be my favorite block in the game. Okay, that was a lie. That was, that was a very, very big lie, but it's a really good one. And before heading into the harbor, let's also just grab up a few stacks of moss here. That's okay. That's a lot more as I want to make some mossy cobblestone. And while we're at it, why not some stone bricks as well? And just to get an idea of what I want to do here behind me, I made a quick little sketch so let's start with some of the coarse dirt and let's see here one two i think this height is gonna be good it means we'll be three blocks off the water which should be a great height so if we bring this back we got a first square here and i'm thinking this is gonna be one of the buildings over here and then one is gonna go in this area and bringing this line back here should give us a square that we can go ahead and fill in And a few markings here to get those buildings I imagined. And I've gone ahead and connected this like what was going to be a warehouse building to this one over here. As uh, so I didn't do that on the sketch, but I think this is going to work out a lot better. And then we have this standalone building over here, which I might take whatever this is going to be. If this is going to be the dire wool factory, I don't know yet. But I might have the storage for both of them in here. And in this backpack here, I have a netherite back tank and diving helmet, which if we just slap those on, I can now breathe underwater. And I'm thinking we start on the this corner over here and we go five blocks then we can have some chiseled stone bricks and some stairs like this before we go downwards a few blocks and build for these sides then i am a little slower but i can break a few of these and let's get some mossy stone brick in there and of course we can't leave the back here open so i want to bring in some stone and like cobblestone and then we can bring in some mossy as we go down a little bit so that we get something like this and i definitely like that and this is definitely a great start to this harbor but we gotta extend it across the rest of the front. 
And with that whole side in there now, I want to get a few more details here on top where we can place in some slabs here every 30 blocks and out here and then drop down and get some dark oak buttons. And if we look back at where we started today and what just adding this harbor has done for this area, I got inspired by this. So I hopped on Fresco and came up with this sketch right here. And I want to start ourselves off with the wool factory. And the first thing I'm going to need for that is some bricks, which this sh might be enough. We'll turn some of this here into etched bricks and flying over to a nearby coral reef and here i want to grab some brain coral and if i mine this am i gonna get the okay i'm gonna get the real one let's bring out my fortune pickaxe do i get yes i want the dead ones definitely a job for the diving set yet again This is definitely going to be enough for this build. And I also gathered up a little more because I think I want to use it for the other factory as well. Before we get a little bit of building going here, I want to head over to our lumber mill. And of course, I'm going to be gathering up a bunch of different wood supplies to use in the build. So let's get you building here and I want to start with the farm itself and I've got some sort of a plant lead so let's remove this we can make this whole bottom layer here into a grass platform that we can take all the way over to this wall over here and around and back now with a clean platform here let's clear out a little more dirt and jumping into my ender chest here let's bring out items I think and get some depots and if I've lined this up one there here 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 every other block here all the way and then we line that with depots that should be eight perfect okay so we do the same thing here and that's gonna be our 16 colors i want to keep a lot of this grass down in here but i do have to replace a little bit of it with some frog lights to get some light in here otherwise the grass won't grow to under the sheeps and the depots have to have something to output onto them and that's gonna be our deployers that we're gonna stack up on all of these blocks here and it's gonna be difficult powering them from the side so if i flink yeah there we go before we do anything else let's grab some andesite funnels and shafts and mechanical belts we can also grab this to maybe hook some things up as i think what we're gonna do first is add in no that needs to be facing inwards on all of these and that's gonna be our shear input and of course we need some belts here running let's see to over to this block there we go now we have a belt running all the way out and i'm thinking we can input shears to that obviously and we'll do that from above somewhere you can probably also hook these up quite simply here with one gearbox in the middle and then that running over into that and those are gonna be spinning opposite directions and gearbox here and let's see can we just do that that and and boom. And next up here, I think we want to be smart and add in our funnels here on the sides before we do anything else, because it's going to be so much easier accessing these. And oh, I have list filters on me. Perfect. As I need to set up a bunch of these. Oh, this is this is going to take a while. Actually, no, it isn't. If we do shears, we put shears in there and then we put shears on the deny list. Perfect. And we can just make one for all of them. We don't have to make the separate colors. So let's see two blocks in front of these deployers here. Let's extend up scout folding every other well in front of the deployers this is just temporary as i want to get a barrel in on top of this as this is going to be all of our wool storage as i don't think i'm going to be needing too much wool and right as i placed those barrels someone in my house decided that it was time to vacuum so i went on a little building spree and built up some walls and it's starting to look pretty good, but we can remove the scaffolding now that we placed in. And below these, I want funnels not set to that mode where you're going to want them to be inputting. I can never remember if I need to crouch when doing that or the other thing. And ooh, thinking about it, I'm going to need filters on all of these because one arm is not going to be going between one. Ugh. All right, we got the filters in there. Now let's grab our mechanical arms and we grab those and for them we should be able to do and then we place it in the middle. And the final one right over here. Perfect. Then if we grab some cogwheels, we can run that across down the bottom here and connect over to that one. Then let's get a vertical gearbox and two shafts running out on each side like this. And then we can do chain drives because we need to power these somehow. And that, yes, that is connected. And we can run that across here to power all of the deployers. 
Then before we go ahead and add in a floor here, let's add in some glass around these. And these are actually going to have to be too high. And ooh, let's get ourselves some andesite casings and cover those up. And before we get a floor in, let's jump to the back here where I already have one hopper, two more, and then two out this way with a chest and that. And that is going to be our shears input. And now we can just go ahead and fill in a floor. Also not covering where the sheep are going to go down. Perfect. And do we go ahead and get the sheep in now? No, we don't because then I'm going to have to listen to all of their noises and I don't want to do that. Instead, I want to improve the building as it's looking really, really boring with just the one floor. So let's add in a second story. Got a little carried away here detailing the top, but I think it's good. Oh, okay. I forgot I didn't have a floor here. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. Adding our mud in here as I really, really like this for a roof. A border of granite down here, switching it up a little bit. I think that might make it a little more interesting. Oh, no, yeah, oh, forget I have um, haste here. I should probably remove that. But I do want to get in some units of air conditioner. And now that I think about it, this wouldn't really exist in the time frame I want to have this world in. Uh, but it's, it's everywhere. It's a little bit fancy. It's fine. It's fine. Something that will fit, though, is definitely going to be a ladder that definitely works. Yep, yep, yep. Um, I, I can climb this. Look, I'm up here now. It worked. Now let's work here on some details on the first story where I want to add in this, like, table. That's a bad word for it. This isn't a table. But I'm thinking we can make it this wide, maybe? And then if we just extend this across in the middle here and make sure those are all facing the correct way. Otherwise, that's 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 going to haunt me. Remove the bottom on all of these. We get, like, a little thing you can stand on. And yeah, that's fun. And this would lead us up here into where we can get a door in with just a few trap doors. Perfect. And I'm going to need to cover this somehow. So let's make a patch of mud with a little bit of grass down here. We can get in some Dean bricks here and over on this side. And ooh, ooh I got a really fun idea. Polish deep slate. And do I have, yes, copycat steps. We can add a little trim of some polished deep slate here, just like we have on the top bit. Oh, right. I could have had this in my offhand, but it's, it's fine. And in here, let's get some train halls for some smokestacks, of course. campfire up here on the top of this one and let's extend this other one up one more block and there we go well three i guess i went ahead and finished up a little bit of detailing here adding in a little ceiling and some barrels in the corner to accompany the very lone chest and i also punched a hole here in the back as well i think it needed a little area and we got some hay storage and i want to come back to this area over here eventually but i don't know with what yet and before we continue with the rest of the port i want to get the sheep in so let's go ahead and fly over here to the barn do i have any wheat in storage yes i do 27 that should be enough or what if i do this very easy for myself uh we grab 16 lead can i even have 16 sheep with me at once yeah we'll, we'll find out and i'm gonna be bringing them a fair bit so uh hopefully it's not gonna be that hard as well um i'm, I'm i want to bring them from over here i'm just gonna put as many leads as i can can i can i have this many Ooh, hello, friends. Let's go. All right, that should be 16. I'm not even going to count and then just hope. It actually seems easier to transport them in the water, so I'm just going to swim around with them. Because it seems like I can go full speed in the water. All of the water made this so much easier. We're already here. I thought this was going to be a struggle. I think I'm going to just park you guys right out here, and I'm going to go grab you one by one. Can I take one's lead off? Oh, oh no. Hmm, I can't. Okay. Um, you're all just gonna have to wander around here, and I'm gonna grab you one by one anyways. And I think you should go in this hole, not that one, this one. Thank you. Might lose some leads doing it this way, though. And uh, let's grab our light gray, and we put it up up there. First one in. And uh, 15 more to go.
And the final sheep. There we go. All 16 colors are in. And um, let's um, repair my wall. And yes, I definitely did correct by putting them in now. Because I would not be able to stand the noise. But I kind of want to get some power to these. So that we can get some wool rolling in. And also see so it all works. And closest steam engine is definitely going to be that one. So maybe routing the power from here. But to do that, I'm going to need to go and get a lot of shafts because it's pretty far and luckily i have a bunch of them just laying around i'm also probably gonna get some more set up as i am slowly but i am running out so let's just throw some more in there and uh, this should be enough hopefully and i think the easiest way to do this uh right i covered all of this up uh let's just go ahead and do that and dig ourselves down oh i, I, I broke it i broke it Ooh, and lining it up here is actually going to be perfect as we get that in and it's going. And it's also rotating the right direction. There's just no shears in the system right now, but uh, let's speed this up a little bit. But I don't think we have to do more than that. Luckily, we can still swim under here to get out super easily. And I got to run over to the iron farm. Oh, well, I guess I'm, well, I guess I'm flying. Let's get ourselves a two stacks of iron. That's going to be 64 shears, which is going to be overkill, I think. But if we still go ahead and why don't we, yeah, we craft up the whole stack and we throw them in and, um, <clears throat> We have to wait a little bit. However, that should work. And these things should be getting sheared now. No? Oh, no. Wait, not yet? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, don't don't tell me. If I do this, I, I, think, I think I know what I've done. And I give both of these shears. All right, so we power both of those. And, well, if we put two sheep, that's not going to work. Uh... And just like that, the problem is fixed. Totally. It didn't actually take that long. So like you saw, the deployers were too close. So I just moved them to sit under the sheep instead. And now they're one block away from the sheep. And it all works. The arms go through the blocks, but it's fine. So in the barrels now, I'm starting to get wool. And I think this is just going to be a slow cooker. And eventually we'll have a bunch of wool if I ever need to use it. But I want to work on something else before we start this factory. So I took the time to widen this river that leads out towards the ocean. Still have a beacon to clear up here, but the river is now wide. And we can get all the way out to the ocean. And out in this ocean, just over here, I have have my gunpowder farm right there and i thought it would be really cool to have a boat parked here that i can take out to the gunpowder farm and well would you look at that i actually have a boat in my inventory ready to go so schematic cannon and i just gotta place this down so let's get the schematic cannon rocking Um, we're a little far up for this being a boat, but that's of course because I want to turn it into a train. So if we get down here, I have a little glass pane that hides under it so that we can hide on train tracks under the riverbed. So let's get a few temporary blocks down here right below that. And if we just play some train tracks in a station and create a new train and boom that should line up which means that should be glued together i'm just gonna do that to make sure now i just have to get that down below us and let's see so i'm gonna want it out one block right here i think i want some track okay so i made something horrific here but it should work for us if we go ahead and assemble the train hopefully i've glued everything correctly together and if we just stand up here oh it looks like it okay i'm gonna sit down actually feels a little safer uh, oh oh this is so scary <laughs> hopefully it goes down to the right level oh okay we're gonna just collide a little bit there but that's fine oh oh this is so cool uh uh oh uh, uh oh okay it's fine is this no it's a little tall it's fine. We'll just make it go down two more blocks. It's fine. I've cleaned up the tracks and I think I got it in the spot I wanted. I absolutely love this. Oh my god. I think it's gonna be so much fun. Me driving out to the gunpowder farm to collect gunpowder. Oh, I'm so, so excited. I can't work on that right now though as I have way too much recording to do because I've been on vacation for a week and um, and I gotta, I gotta get done with this video. But I will fix it. I'm just gonna do that on my own time before the video be 
these leases, of course, because we got to see it in action. But with this boat in, I want to get working on our second factory, the die one. For this other factory, I want a block I've not used in this world. Exciting. Oh, <clears throat> I, for I forgot I had that on me. Exciting. Yes. Yes, it is. And I actually want to use Prismarine, but I don't have any good access to it. But I think I have a plan. And for this plan, I'm going to need a couple of rails. And if we run up to the garage, we have our drill. And uh, I'm thinking we could use this to maybe mine some of an ocean monument. And there we have an ocean monument. This is such a shallow ocean, but they're just stuck in here. And I want to think about this for a second here. I think I'm just going to run it straight through the middle. So if we swim down to, yes, here. And if we can... Oh, Oh, okay. I, I got one block out of the way. I needed a few more. Um, all right. We'll send it up a little higher then. We'll have to send it in here. And, oh, I, I should probably put my back tank on. And we can put that there. Ooh, that's going to cause an issue. All right. We'll have to take it up one more block. All right. Hopefully this still gets me enough. Oh, this is cool. We're just shaving off. I got to keep up with it to place blocks because... It's gonna fall out. All right, I'm gonna hope I have enough and I'm just gonna get out of here because I don't wanna die and this is a mess. And hopefully with all of the prismary needed gathered, I flew over to the nearby mangrove swamp to mine up a bit of mud. With most of the blocks gathered up here, except a few small details, I quickly want to run over to the spider farm and slap some spiders. Because we can't go around building with broken tools, can we? Tools repaired and all of our materials gathered up here and um, this box as well. There, there, there's a lot of them. And I want to work on this little storage bit first and then we move on to the main factory. So we're going to start off strong here and get a floor in to start with. Getting rid of the temporary stone before bringing back some prismarine and warp wood for the walls. I'm back here, I left two openings where I want to bring up some fluid tanks, a couple of blocks, at least up to here. But let's take them a few more blocks. Let's see, one and two more on this one. And we can connect them with just like a few pipes. And also those two. And I'm thinking this will go into the actual building later. Which the wall for that should be right here. Let's get some details here on the front. Adding in some gateways, I was going to say. Is that what this is? I forget the word. But just an arc, maybe maybe oh and i'm thinking we use one of my favorite blocks here we use some servers to create some garage doors i absolutely love using observers for this but this is of course going to be a warehouse so i want to bring out a conveyor belt here which we can get in behind and this is eventually going to make for our output for the dice which i've gone ahead and make some threshold switches here which if we take away some cobblestone add in our barrels on top of here then popping down below let's get our threshold switches in and this makes for a cool little detail here where we can see the progress bar of it and if if we take some metal girders on the top of the barrels extending up every other an extra block and then i have this box right here full of placards with different colors which we can use to color code this and sadly we can't make any blue dice so we're just gonna have to run with these 13. And while we won't be producing everything to make the dice in this factory, which means I want to actually input something from other factories. I know, we're going to be using trains between factories. It's going to be amazing. So on top of these girders here, I want to start adding in first one vault right here, second one, and eventually a third one. As I want to input bones, cactus, and charcoal, which also means that we need a belt going from here to the outside. But with that, the warehouse launched logic is complete except a few redstone links so let's add on a roof and well here we have our warehouse part of this and this actually looks proper cool i'm very excited for the die factory but i want to sort our inputs first and i need to get a train down here so over here at our train yard let's grab a few train tracks to maybe get that hooked up and i think this is about as far as i want to bring it as i can make a train stop here and we have two blocks to walk around it perfect so i 
I want to lead this into a tunnel, I think. And this was on my original sketch where I want to bring it into the ground here around and connect it up to a tunnel entrance over here somewhere. And this track. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try to work out something here. I'm over here at my little tunnel bore thing and I'm gonna use this but I want to make some slight modifications before we do that as I want to add in just a fee hello what did I just duplicate the train okay um a free resources I guess all right let's give that another attempt here oh I've just lost the whole train all right, I got our train pretty much re rebuilt to what it used to be. And uh, let's assemble that and hopefully this doesn't break again. I am so confused and why it broke. But we're going to disable that. And we're actually going to go ahead and turn ourselves around first. Because we need to be heading this way. Uh, we can turn that on round about now. Let's see how this does. Wait, 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 wait. Before we go blasting into my port, I should probably turn those off. And uh-oh, uh-oh, help. Okay, there we go. Slow down. And let's turn it around. Is, um, I'm not sure. What if I back out here? Is it gonna... Oh, it would have destroyed a toolbox. Okay, that would have been actually been very bad. All right, so let's turn it on here and then we can fix the rest by hand. But I don't want it destroying my whole world. And well, with that, we have a beautiful tunnel wrapping around... And out over here. And I've done a little bit of work and I made a tunnel. The tunnel actually has an interior going all the way through it now. Oh, um, I'll fix that soon. But it goes up and out over here. I've also done a little bit of prep here material wise as I've got two boxes here to build a new train. I uh, know, a new train. It's amazing. Uh, ow, ow. And I've even prepped the cannon right down here. So let's get some gunpowder in there and let's build it. So let's create new train and assemble a train. From those bogey must be at station marker. Uh, assemble. Perfect. Die delivery. So let's get ourselves in here and let's drive ourselves over to the die factory. Help! The train has kidnapped me! Ah! Oh! Get me off of this! Okay. I, I think I have a train schedule that is working. Oh, I love seeing a train on this track. So that should go down there. And we should be able to catch it backing up into this area right here. Oh, yeah, there it comes. Okay, first part of this works. Because it needs to pick up three different things. And right here, it's going to pick up some bones. Which I just had a thought. I, I, I don't think that we have any bones. Uh-oh. Why is it going? Oh, no. Okay. I think it was positioned a little wrong, so I need to fix that, but it should go up into the tunnel here, and we should see it poking around the corner here in just a second. Yes, there it is. Okay, so that's gonna fill up on some charcoal, and this is the next stop that I've just realized isn't spinning. I need to get some rotation to that. Okay, so we should just be able to get some shafts going up and into here. That should spin the wrong way, though. Yeah, that's not the way we want it. Which we can actually super easily fix here with a gearbox. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to skip this now because I need to hook up some logic. And I don't want the vault filling up completely on charcoal. So, oh, okay. It kicked me off it. But this should go into the tunnel. And, yep, there it comes back up the hill. There's a little lot going backwards. But there is no space to turn around over here. So, it kind of has to. But that got loaded with the cactus that we had building up. And leaving this station now, it should return back to the factory. And here it is. Perfect. I'm going to take away the train station, though. As I have some logic to hook up. Just so that it doesn't fill up on everything. Because uh, the vault is full. And all right, it doesn't even have power. It's fine. But that's enough shenanigans with trains as I have a whole factory to build. So let's start with some walls. I want to add in this little gap here. And to start ourselves off, I want to bring out a small little dock area down by the water here. Which if we hop down below here, we can bring this down, say, another three blocks. Because that's what I have the materials for. Where I want to make some walls out of our blue mix. Some small details down here at these windows with some window shutters on the side. 
But if we flip some spruce support, upside down, put that at the top with a fence gate under, something like this. And on the inside here, I've added in a floor, which we can get some doors in right over here. And to complement that, a small little roof. Now with that side bit done there, I ran around to the main building to add in some details around that. Got this small little area here in the back where I want to add another probably decorative tank, but I guess I could store something if the factory needs it, but um, I don't think it will. And we'll get a pipe going into that and maybe into the factory right there. What we can also do right here is add in a small little root. And well, one more up to this. One of my favorite little details here with a little drain pipe. Perfect. And here we have the first part of this dye factory, where we are inputting our items. They're all being processed here. Some of the bone meal will go over to a too tall flower farm so that we can get all of those dyes. And what we're automating now is our black, gray, light gray, white, and our two greens. This is a lime green here. That up there is our green. That's our white and light gray, and that's our gray and black. Oh, things are going everywhere. Oh, that, uh, that's bad. Oh, uh, that's bad. Oh, uh, that, that's, that, this is real bad. Okay. Um, uh, panic. Remove you. Okay, we're fine. I need threshold switches. I have 27 redstone dust. Uh-oh. But I have a lot of redstone torches, so it shouldn't matter. As we can craft up a bunch of comparators and a bunch of threshold switches. Okay, but it's clearing it up very fast, which we are gonna do like. Okay, we should be able to get up here as I want to build a third story. But that is, should be all we need. And then some redstone links on top of these. Oh boy, what is going on? Oh, I need an overflow. Well, there should be no overflow though, so it's fine. All right, so our problem should be solved with those. I do have to add in a few more redstone switches to eventually like turn off bone meal once these get full, but I'll add that in a little later as I just want to get this up and running for now. But we need an in-case chain drive right in here. There we go, but it's going to be a little overflowed, I think. No, it shouldn't. Okay, it's a little full, but it's fine. Um, Although I don't have any of the other resources, apparently. Wait, hold up. I haven't hooked up that yet. Hold up. You'll be right here. And then we, on the outside of this, we could add two. could add one of those. And one of those. Now, is that spinning the correct way? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So that should eventually turn that into green dye. Yes, there it goes. And that green dye is going to get split. And perfect. What are you mixing? Oh, we had a little bit of bone in there. Just not that much. Oh, no. I'm, I'm burning everything. No. Wait. Hold up. Stop. Stop it. Ah. Let me get you. Okay. Okay. So I've I've just been burning all of these. Great. 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 Good job, Stam. Good job. Okay. Funnels added in. And now I shouldn't be destroying everything I make. You know, that... Ugh, real good job, Stam. This is why I designed these things beforehand and not just wing it. But power that again and we should be getting resources. There's black dye down here. Yes. Now we're getting black, gray... Um, yeah, that's about it. We only have coal. But that's because I need to run over to my bone farm and stand there for a bit because that basically powers half of this factory. But now with the factory below somewhat finished up, I wanted to get the third story on here, continuing our brick up even further. And then, of course, on top of this, bringing in a roof. And with that and some extra details, the dye factory is completed. It's a mess inside, but hey, it, it, it makes dye for me. And do I have any bone meal in those? Oh, I do. Ooh, not a lot, but a little bit. And that should make it so that we have... Oh, we have a little bit of like everything in here now. Awesome. Yes. Oh my. I've gone ahead and activated the train. So it's going on its route. And we have a few fixes to do here. And the first fix I want to make is the little area besides the wool factory. Adding in three wheat fields here to, well, feed the sheep. As well, we can at least imagine that we're giving them food. And I also just like fields. But I also went ahead and worked a little bit of some pathways on my stream earlier. And I've got those in leading away from the factory itself now. All the way over to the farming area. Area, and I want to bring it over this way down there. And while getting the rest of this path in, I wanted to get some trees in the surrounding area, so I had a schematic cannon doing that for me. 
trains coming, gotta wait for that. But I also took the time to add in just a little bit of grass everywhere, which really brings the project together. And we have our path here leading throughout the trees, which will eventually lead up to our lumber mill. But I have some other projects to do over there, so I'm not sure how I want to take the path, so I'm just gonna leave it for now. And I gotta hop here under the harbor to connect it down to the seabed. Quick trip here back to the storage room to refill the back tank and stock up on a little more dirt that I am don't have that much of. Well, I have a lot of dirt. It's just it's just in here. Back pink all charged up, so let's grab that back. And I just have a little bit of more dirt to place. Just run around here on the seabed, adding in some seagrass to add in a little bit of color and something a little interesting down here. I do wish it spread it out a little more, but I guess it's fine. Nothing you're really gonna see too closely anyways. To fly above it, it looks good with a little bit of green down there. I also felt this area over here was a little empty, so I had the schematic kind of work on that while I was working on the seabed. And I definitely think these trees looks awesome. And I've got to clean up a little bit down here at the docks as well. I have so many shulker boxes here now yep there we go looking a lot clearer now but it looks a little empty so i have a few barrels and such in my inventory here that i just want to get down to get a few small details in here And this really doesn't have to be anything special, I think. I think it's just nice to have a little bit of barrels and stuff here. And it makes it look like something's actually happening. And if we just take a short look back to when we had just finished the second factory. And comparing it to now, adding in these other details around the builds make them fit into the world a lot more. These factories are not just placed onto the ground here. They're actually cemented into the ground and really, really fit in this is one of those steps that i think takes a project to the next level of course we also have our factories this one which is a bit of a mess but it does create dyes for us which is awesome and of course all the wool which is going to be amazing for future builds and not only does this port look amazing it also works with a boat that not only takes me out to sea but also over and around to my creeper farm where i can load up on gunpowder in the last few months i've taken this village tearing it all down and then spending over 300 minecraft building it back up even better. It currently has a train station and my villagers set up, but today I want to industrialize this city, adding two brand new farms, improving an old one, and a warehouse to store it all. Leave a like if you're excited, and please subscribe to help me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers this year. And here's the quick plan that I sketched up for this expansion. And on me right now, I have two shulker boxes full of stone, and I want to get some of these buildings planned out in here. And so I'm just going to start down here at the bottom and work work my way upwards. There's two houses in here. And let's get another five of them planned out here. So much stone. And well, this is all the stone I have left. And I still want one more building. So let's just do a quick little refill of this box. And let's just get this final building into existence. Looking back at how the city used to look and taking a step back here with the brand new stone buildings in, we now have an idea of how this finished project is going to look. And to get us there, we have a lot of work to do. To start that work, I want to get these two buildings in, but we have a lot of stone right here. So let's go ahead and bring out a bit of iron and we'll place it up here on the hill because this is an area I won't be working on for at least a little bit. And of course, we're going to give ourselves haste too with this one so that we can mine away the stone much, much faster. And with our temporary stone torn down, let's build up a new foundation using a mix of stone variants. And then for the walls, bringing in some smooth stone along with diorite and mushroom stems. And with the walls in here now, I want to get working on our roof. And this is going to be a little bit of a different one. I've done it in the past over at the other gatehouse on the opposite side of town. And I want to bring it back in here with a bit of a twist. Where I want to on this side over here, just build it up like a pretty much a normal roof. Until we get up to this point right here and build it up on the other side. On this end, we can start with our oak or not oak. This is mango stamp. Bring it up like this. And then we bring in some stairs on top of this and this is the roof i used over at the other gatehouse over here i want to leave space for a couple of windows so we can add one in there then we add a second one in right here 
adding in our windows just like this pretty big but i think it's gonna fit in perfect then let's make an inside trim here with some dark oak and uh can i stand here Yes, this will be an inside trim as I definitely want to get some mango around that to kind of mask the dark oak, leaving a little bit of dark oak right here at the top. I've got most of the roof in here, but I do want to add in a little bit of an outcropping here to make it a little more interesting. So I will stack up some spruce and bring in some trapdoors here in the middle. I'll use this one as a temporary as I want to bring in an oak trapdoor on the outside. Then a small little dark oak awning on this. And no, I don't want you that down. I want you here. And one more block right in front here. With a few details in here on the first part of this house. And to start the tower extension, I first tore down the stone and then use the same mix of blocks as for the house foundation topping that off with some limestone and now let's work on the final part of this the little drawbridge in between well this isn't a drawbridge this is mainly just a catwalk but this is going to be the house for a gate of course so we break those blocks and okay i've just placed the bar behind me not 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 where i wanted it i wanted you right here let's get the stone out of here which is a great help to know what you want to do but it's it's a little bit in the way when you're actually putting the blocks in I'm just going to cover those with some dark oak slabs for now. Or, well, forever. Let's go ahead and get some walls in here now. And we'll just bring these up to the same height that we had before. And then we'll add in our frame glass panes right in here. Also, I don't want to forget about my flower boxes. And why not throw in some details now so that we don't have to scaffold up on the outside afterwards. But, of course, it, it, it helps if you're placing it in the right way. And now just a little roof on this. And I'm realizing I forgot the fence gates there. But I should be able to fix that. No problem. Easy connection here. Just running that like so and we can just run that across into the tower Aww. there fence gates flower pots and flowers and that finishes us off the first building i'd say so let's get the second building built right away using a schematic cannon and there we go it's first two buildings in here and throwing some shaders on, they look really good. With the two houses down here done, let's move up to the top one, which still is looking like a lot of stone. Before doing some material gathering for the rest of the expansion, I want to dig out and terraform an area for a future lake, as this is a project I've had on my mind for a couple of months now. And this is how this area looks. We obviously have to get the water in here and decorate that, but this is a great start. And honestly, I could kind of leave it like this and I'd be happy with it, but I really want the lake. And another thing that we're going to have to do here before we get to some material gathering is my tools need to be repaired. So you know what that means? Got to trade with some villagers. And why, why are you on the loose? There you go. Get back in your seat. Oh, and we might as well buy some brick here as I think I'm going to be needing some th of that for the future material gathering. I really have to do something about the storage situation at the villagers. Fresh set of tools and let's head over to the lumber mill. To of course spend a little bit of time going through all of my wood supply to grab up the necessary blocks. So many wood blocks later, back in the storage here to put in the last one in sugar boxes. Next up here, let's head up to the drill garage. Do I have any coal sitting around in here? Maybe? No? Okay, that's fine. As I need to grab my drill as well, I'm I'm out of tough. And, and crimsite. Should be able to find some tough pretty easily down here in this cave if I can get down here. So we'll get that down and then we'll get that one. Okay, I need to make that face in the right direction next time, but this... Oh no, oh no. Oh, okay. Almost messed it up, but that should just continue into that top. Um, okay, four stacks in there. And how much do I have in here? Another four. That should be enough. I got a little more back at home, but not that much. So I had to stock up, but that should do. But I, oh, that. Okay, I, I want to run in one more. Grabbing that up, let's head back up to the surface. Let's get all of this unloaded. Turn that into a bunch of building blocks. What we had would have been enough, but can't complain about a little bit of extra. I've got one more thing I need for these buildings here, and that's going to be some sand, which we can head over here and smelt up into glass. And then I want to fly over to the dye factory and see if I have some dyes there, which I should. Maybe not enough, though, as I need purple 
pull. Oh, okay. I have some bones. The train is just a little slow, so I'm just gonna throw those into the system. Then turn that on, and we should get more dice. I know I'm gonna need some light gray dye. I'm also going to need some white and a little more purple. And now I've just gotta spend a little bit of time combining these glasses and dice. Now we're just gonna run these sugar boxes over here to the town. I mean, it's it's a city. It's a city. And I want to work on this building right here, which is gonna be the first of our two farms. First thing, I want to get away the first story here so that we can replace that with the proper blocks. And with our stone gun, I want to go ahead and start making some walls here. Going for a little bit of a mix of a few gray materials for that. I went ahead and got the windows in as I need to place some gravel above a few of those. And now I want to get some window details in here using some spruce support, a campfire and gates. I'm looking at it now and I'm not liking how that clashes as much with the soul campfire. That's what they're called. So let's try that instead. Yeah, I think I'm a bigger fan of that. Over in this little area here, we have a little bit of an indent and I'm just going to fill this with a little bit of coarse dirt now and then I'll detail this a little more. But I'm not sure what I want to do with this house yet. So I'm going to leave this as it is now and I'll fix it in the future. One little thing that we can add is just this over here at the door to add in a little bit of a detail. But with the first story complete, I'm heading up and first tearing down the stone. Adding some new walls in, using a mix of spruce, and then to detail that, adding in some jungle accents. Before moving onto the roof, I headed to the side facing the pottery shop and removed its bay window, replacing it with a catwalk similar to the one at the gatehouse. Now let's pop up to the roof to get that built, and I'm thinking we use our trusted crimside mix for this. all done let's hop around to the side here where i want to get some concrete in then let's do some oak trap doors for a little window and we'll fit in the rest of this can i somehow be on the inside here i'm just gonna stand on some iron bars that i have on me and we can get all of this in and finish up the final one right over here which should complete the house itself and it's actually very spacious which is gonna be good for what i want to put in here i want to put a limestone farm i have a small one but it's very hands-on and i want to make a little bit of a better one so let us grab Grab. I'm gonna grab, let's see, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna start, grab a stack of holly blocks. We definitely won't be using all of these, but let's take eight of them. Drop that in the whisk over here, and I should have, I have six buckets. So we'll go ahead and make two more, grab some coal, and then we fire up the blaze burner below that, and this should make us some honey that we can just take out like this. And we also can't forget to head up here to the steam factory, which is obnoxiously loud, and grab some lava buckets. I really gotta make a proper place to grab lava but another time so let's get to some engineering and last time i winged it went great the dye factory is perfect mm -hmm. but i want to stick to the second floor here as i want to put an interior on the first one i just don't know what yet i'm thinking about it would it be how would i get the items out of here no we wouldn't send them across the catwalk because i have an interior for that over there and that messes with that so we're gonna try to put the output in this corner right over here because that's gonna be closest to the warehouse and so i'm thinking we make this as simple as possible for ourselves so we're gonna get a shaft here we'll run this across as our output to this side then a belt right here and here which we can just get off a few blocks in this direction this doesn't have to be that many we'll grab them a few more though then bringing in some polished deep state here in the middle we'll bring that up one block one block on this side and ooh, drills the drills need to go somewhere hmm what if maybe i don't need this much honey what if we break these in the middle here and replace that with honey would that flow both sides it would so we're only gonna use four buckets then or we extend it i mean we might as well and then we'll bring out our drills here and we'll get eight drills on this side and another eight on this side this is going to be so overkill but i might as well i i have no reason not to do it some encased shafts on that to get all of these spinnings and we could just power that from over there Ooh, but mm, no because that turns off when the brick is full so no we wouldn't do that this is however the bare bones we should be able to get our honey in here in the middle now put some blocks right over that a few more blocks so that the lava doesn't escape which we can now throw in right up here and this should make ourselves the limestone at least so the farm basically works i just need to power the rest of it and i i don't really want to power it i do want to power it to test that it works but we don't have an output yet so 
we'll power it and see if it works and then we'll turn it off. Oh, look at me. First time using a copycat panel like it's supposed to be used. Or I think that's what it's supposed to be used for to cover up the shafts, of course. And uh, now if we head in here and we flip the lever over here, is this spinning the right way? It is. Okay. So are we getting... Oh yeah, that's... I think I, th I think it's fast enough. I, th I think I think it's uh, it's fast enough. Turn it off. Turn it off. All right, that was a few seconds, and um, <laughs> we got a little under two stacks. All right, it's 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 definitely fast enough. With the limestone farm being so fast, I want to start the city warehouse. First, tackling the roof with some crimson, pink terracotta and bricks. And well, right now that roof is flying since I went ahead and removed the stone. So we got to fix that. So we got to start off the foundation here. And I'm thinking, nope, I want one, two, three blocks. Then we bring another one. We go another three and another three over to this point. So that's going to be our three entrances. And then we'll have the storage in here by going ahead and bring in this front up here. On this bottom floor, I went ahead and got in the other walls as well, where we can add in some signs on the corners. And let's get some trap doors and some spruce wood. Then we'll run some trap doors through the middle. And continuing that right over here to get us to the end. And adding those trap doors, I was going to say, but signs back in here. And over on this side. Now let's make our way up to the second floor here, where I want to continue that texture that we have up at the roof down to this level. And to do that, I want to start off with some light gray concrete powder and mix in our die right here then as we go upwards here i want to slightly introduce our calcite into this build and as i'm finishing up this build here i'm realizing that putting the roof in first made it a little trickier to build it but it's fine because we've almost got it done there we go now we just need a few details so let's go ahead and grab some purple glass a couple of leaves and chains so why don't we start with the side window right here where we'll get some scaffolding into the middle then an acelia bush three change on this one because it's three tall and then a staircase up there on the side of this we bring out some oak and get that in right here and then if we just pop over to the other windows to repeat that Now that we have that in on all of the windows, let's pop up here as I want to add in some purple stained glass behind this for a little bit of a purple hint out here. This one we can leave open and I'm probably gonna have to fix this interior a little bit on the second floor because I feel like this is going to be visible. But otherwise, the rule of thumb I've been having in the city for when I'm going to be making the interiors is definitely going to be decorating the first floor and most likely not the second floor. But with the main portion of this build being done, I pop around to the back to first remove some stone and then build up a little shed. But with that, I want to move on here to the inside as we have to turn this into a warehouse because I have things to store. So first, let's rip out the floor just to add in a new one out of deep slates, which is the same material as the road. But I might add some sort of a barrier at the doors to kind of transition into this area anyways. What if we just take some polished deep slate and we replace this right here with that? Yeah, that kind of borders off. I'm happy with that. Now, let's see. We got to think of a little bit. What are we going to put in here? So we're going to have the limestone. I want to have a scoria farm and we have a brick farm so that's three farms that should have their outputs here and i'm thinking three vaults for those which we can mark out with some grass here we'll have one right here another one here i want to make sure that we can get up into this area maybe we should do smaller vaults no i don't think like that's an option but i mean if we have those two there we have a final vault over here and then we can extend this wall out two blocks by just bringing out a little more acacia here okay that's gonna work because now we are bringing out that one on one block mm, i'm not a huge fan of that could we we can move these over one block that would work yeah cool and then this could be like a staircase that goes to nothing aka the second floor now we should already have enough barrels we need 54 and another 27 and we're gonna make those into vaults but i am out of iron so i've got to head over here to the iron factory jump across here and grab a few more stacks Ooh, i am low on iron i should start that up again getting a little sidetracked here but i did realize that the iron farm was on but it wasn't getting any gravel i'm suspecting that this isn't working oh yeah it's it's a little bugged out we'll pause that and that should reset. Gotta push that minecart back into place. Now if we start that back up, it should be working again. Yep, perfect. And with that little detour, we have our iron that we need to craft off our vaults. Which, if we take away our temporary dirt, we can add this 3x3 in right here. Oh, never mind. There we go. 
And I so wish we had like silos, which could go upwards instead. Because then I could build this double the size without any issues. But I can't build it two more blocks this way or three more blocks because, you know, then I have no space in here. Really, really wish you could place these vertically. And now we just have to think about how we want to get items in here. And, you know, my age-old favorite, definitely throwing them around the roofs, which we could honestly do. But I think we're going to have to use these two for that. But to build these two buildings, we're going to need some blocks. So let's get some mud, mangrove, and red nether brick. Then I'm thinking we also throw some sandstone and stone variants to switch it up. And just a few other blocks as well. And so with the materials gathered up, let's let our trust friend the schematic cannon do its work and build us two new houses. And they are looking great. It's going to be great looking out over the lake here, which at the moment is a little hard to imagine, but we'll get that in shortly. As for now, I want to wrap around into the city and this street is coming together so nicely. But I want to route our limestone and brick into this building and eventually our scoria in this stone building from over here. And once we have that in these buildings, I'm thinking we can just kind of launch them over the street into the warehouse. Maybe? Let's see. Let's break that, that, and that. We have our three inputs. Then we can grab 30 weighted ejectors here. And, oh, right. I have to hook them up to something on the other side. What if we remove these? Then I need some copycat panels that we can place in front of this here to not break the aesthetic. And then place this high fade back in there. Perfect. Then if we just aim these, can I aim them on a scaffolding? Oh, I can't. From over here. If we actually do something here, let's just crank that back with a hand crank and see if we can get that item on there on it. Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, that's going to work. Well, that's going to be epic, actually. We might as well reuse the stairs here, just placing them this way. No one's going to see that, right? It's fine. Then cover that up. Perfect. Now we just have to hook up the rest. And I'm thinking we'll start in here because this is going to be the simplest. So we'll get this box out. Those are going to land right here. We'll send one of those into this corner over here. So this is going to be the end point of one of these, which can go from this one right here. That's going to be our scoria. And I'd like the other ones to also be on the back one, which would be right there there and right over on this one shoots and then a smart shoot on top of that and these will have to put some filter on because i want to bring them to the same belt i think as i think that's gonna look the best and we actually have space on both sides to add in a little fire just if we get a little overflow and don't mind it being on the wooden floor and now i guess we just work our way backwards to all of the outputs I've been working away on it here. This is the brick input, which I'm thinking we can put a basin on right here. Can I like... Oh, no, no, no. Can I get this to not be it on that one? There we go. Then we have a press on top of this and a funnel on the side here, I guess. Just like that. And then we do the recipe to bricks. I think that works. And that's going to be brought over here. Got the limestone hooked up, all of that. And that goes over into the building. And technically, that should go over into the storage. Ah, uh, right. I have to hook up all the builds. All right. I've just turned on the limestone farm here let's see if it works we should see limestone flying yep there's some limestone and if we run upstairs we should see it on the belt here and then drop into the first one here yep everything seems to be working perfect i just have to have an output to this but uh, soon that's good now the brick and that should work i can unlock the brick as well by just doing this although the brick farm itself is still off because well the vault there's full I'll, I'll fix that a little later as well we've got a third output to fix and to do that we've got to build this building and i've got the stone removed per Perfect for us to start building here where I want to get some rail dark oak planks across here and then every three will do four blocks there and then three more blocks and one more and that's going to be the length of a wall. This can be where our door goes. Then we extend up this block one more on all of these. Continue our logs up another three past that. This llama is annoying me with all its noises so um goodbye. Then we'll continue up here with some dark oak, leaving a space for a window right there. These we can continue upwards, get some dark oak stairs, that across, and top it off with there. And this big one here, we get some ladders in, we jump on the inside and add in some full blocks. And right over here, we can add in some white glass panes. And what fire am I hearing? I think I'm hearing the fire from the skeleton farm. Before we continue upwards, just add in a little bit of decoration there. And to make this doorway a little interesting over here, we'll first go in with some 
some red nether brick going down like that, replacing that one because we only want it like that. Then we get some cut limestone and just alternate this for a little overhang with a small little post right there, copying kind of what we did on this side, but with a different color. Next up, let's jump on top here to start adding in a wall. We'll leave a gap for a doorway there, so I want to make a balcony. And then we continue this over and up. Now with the wall is extended up there, let's get some final details in on this front side here by adding in some slabs and stairs. Jumping on top of this, where we can bring out our door and trap doors. Trap doors we can get in just around right here. For that little balcony that I talked about earlier. On the windows over here, we'll just add in a cilia bush at the bottom of that. Some trap doors I was going to say, but that's window stamp. Then we'll get some ladders on the outside and a gate facing into the window. And I'm just realizing now that I'm missing a block I need. I have all the mangrove and should have some oak somewhere. Yep, right in here. But I need some sod blocks. So trip into the nether. Realizing I'm very low on rockets now, but I should be fine if I don't fly the wrong way. Uh oh, this isn't good. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We can get out another stack of rockets. Okay, perfect. But right over here, we should have access to some sod. Oh, well, some crimson ilium that we can turn into crimson ilium sod, if that's what it's called. I feel like four stacks definitely should be enough for this roof, considering we only have 64 mango stairs. Before we can get our roof in, we gotta get some of our spruce, I was gonna say. Again, I'm I'm missing all of these words, but it this is this is oak, Stam. This is oak. I know that. And with our oak trim situated, we'll start filling this area in with the sod blocks we just gathered up and some mango stairs. And then to finish off the side of the roof, extending up a chimney here. And of course, capping that off like we have all of the other chimneys in the city. And with what I would call the front facing facade of this house done, I have three more sides here that are lacking blocks. So I just went around and filled those in. And with most of the building in, we got one little final thing here to get ourselves up to these two doors that is up here. And that's going to be a little bit of spruce. We then transition into some slabs and I'm missing a door, but something just like that before we can bring ourselves down on this side again, right there, but right here. And then some dark oak trap doors here on the sides to get in a little bit of a barrier because we don't want to go falling down. But with this house now done, let's put our farm in it. And I want to make a scoria farm. And the score is a little more complicated to make the lime is and it's, it's it's a whole process let me show you so we need to make scoria and to make scoria we need to smelt or bulk blast soul sand which we get from bulk hunting sand and sand we get from cobblestone so we need to make a cobblestone farm crush that twice haunt it and then blast it and we have what we want sounds uh, kind of hard honestly but i'm confident we'll make it work here so first of all i want to make up uh, four stairs and we'll start ourselves right over here should know how to make one of these now We'll have that built in there. Then we can put some drills on this side. Just going to block all of this up with some blocks here. We get some water buckets for this little area in here to create our water. We, we are fine with one lava bucket, to be fair. But we'll get in two. And why not the other two as well? And then cover it up. Cool. That's going to make ourselves our stone. Which, yep, we see in there. I'm going to choose here to go downwards. And that's just because I kind of want to use up the space. And no real reason. I could stay up here, but I'm going to go down. And we'll go down to... To, I want to put in a floor and we'll probably do that on this level. Oh, ooh, ooh. So we'll leave it here. We'll get ourselves a shaft going that way and running also belts in this direction. How far would we need to take this? We'll take it over to here for now. As on this belt line here, we got to first of all grab some gearboxes. One, two there. And we can do the other two right here. Flipping these upwards just like this. Grabbing a shaft in the middle so they'll spin. And then going back to our machines toolbox grabbing some crushing wheels and this is how we turn our cobblestone into sand eventually where i want to take this is out no out up there so we have to bring it back up and we can use our fans for that as we need to both blast and haunt it so moving the items over one block here we'll use our output funnel right there is this is going to be our haunting we can shoot this upwards without worrying about the items falling into the fan or the lava that's below i mean which okay this might be a little slow down now but should be fine isn't that there and then we have our campfire there blowing it upwards okay so this should bring ourselves upwards we're gonna have soul sand in here we drop that out and then we have a fan over in this area pushing it that way which is going to be blasting it yes all right i've routed some power into the building here and everything should be hooked up Ooh, and 
not that fan though and i'm missing a campfire all right so i've added in the campfire there and i switched this around because i turned it on and it was spinning the wrong way but if we turn it on now it looks like stuff is spinning the right way. Let's see. Where's that belt spinning? That belt is spinning. Yep, that's spinning the right way. Is that blowing upwards? Yes, it is blowing upwards. And then let's see. Yep, that belt is going the right way now. And if we hop up here, I just got some soul sand. That's perfect. That is perfect. That means it's working. I'm going to go ahead and turn it up and quickly hook it up to the storage. Okay, everything in here is looking good, I think. Everything should end up on that depot, which is what the mechanical arms it takes and puts up here. And it's actually missing a filter here, which we got to put some scory on. Let's turn this on. Let's see if we get some scoria into the farm. While we wait for that, we should probably also hook up a depot and a brass funnel over here to actually see if we're getting any items. We definitely have limestone. I don't think we have any brick yet because I still haven't really fixed that vault over there, but I will do that really soon. But let's just wait and see if we have any scoria. Oh, something just went flying over. Huh? Yes, okay, we have it. Okay, it works. But with all of our farms working now, I still have one more building left here to finish. So let's jump up on the roof and let's get to digging. With our stone torn down, I want to bring our foundation back up using a bit of brick. And with our foundation in here, we can start adding in our second floor, coming in with our sand. And then go into the side of these walls to add in a little bit of decoration before we pop up to the roof to add that in. Using our mix of mushroom blocks here to get a red gradient. And that being most of this, but I do want to make this little like outcropping of dirt here into a little bit of a flower bed. So we'll just add in some tough. And don't tell me I'm missing three. Oh, oh I have three right here. Perfect. To finish that little flower bed off, which we can add some flowers into a little later when I'm adding flowers into all of the flower pots. Yeah, I've kind of been a little lazy on adding them. Well, I will do it. It looks so good. But the first vegetation that I want to add in to the city is definitely going to be some vegetation around the lake I've just created. I spent a little bit over an hour working on this, filling it in and decorating the bottom of it. And ooh, I need seaweed in here. How could I have missed it? And yeah, that looks so much better. I added in a lot of vegetation here, but I actually really, really like it. I think it gives off a little bit of a fairy tale vibe, which I'm definitely a fan of this being a fantasy world and all. But one little thing I do want to add back here is definitely going to be a little bit of a port, I was going to say, but this is not going to be a port stamp. I want to bring out some slabs here from the ground, just like a level up a few blocks out to make some boat bridges thing. I don't know what these are called in English, but in Sweden, we call them pretty good. Just something a little small like this then we take some dark oak here on the outside and just add in like two pillars right here to get a little bit of a spot where you can maybe stand and fish or you can jump in the water have a lake day just just have a little good time and i want to add in a second one over here at this house This definitely isn't anything super special, but it adds to the lake a little bit, which I am definitely a fan of because I, I, I love the lake. I love the lake. And then maybe adding some boats in here later, but only like small ones that you can actually sit in, not like any custom ones. I, I don't think they're going to fit. Heading back through into town, I want to extend a pathway leading down between the skeleton farm and the warehouse down to this little farmer's house. Halfway up to the city here is perfect. I have wanted this pathway for a while and I think it goes really nicely down to the little fishing dock. This is probably the path that the farmers and the fishermen used to get up into the city and over to the market stands. Now, still have to work on interiors, but I do not have the time to do that today. So, we're going to be spending a little bit of time here on the outside. Because I want to bring out a little courtyard first. I want to use some bricks here. Let's see. So, we're going to go that one two and three i think then we can turn and do another one right here and i'll probably leave this open here because well uh, you're not gonna make it up here right i mean if i just like remove a little bit of dirt but we're also gonna go ahead and replace a little bit of this with some brick tiles for a little bit of texturing because texturing is always nice and grabbing an assortment of blocks this is a courtyard design i've done a lot in the past where's some mud brick walls here in between some palisades on each of these blocks with a fence on top of them and then also fences on top of the walls with some oak above that now with this we can allow ourselves to take away a little bit of terrain here going over to this house and just clear this whole area 
Now, as I'm filling this up here, I actually have no idea what I should put in this little area. As this is a warehouse, so I guess they could be storing some things out here. But I don't really know. So, what do you guys think I should put here? Comment down below. And well, I ran around a little more, adding in some vegetation all over the place. Finally got the flowers in. And just a few little details throughout, such as this potato wagon over here. Supplying this building right here with potatoes. I am... Um, I'm yet to make an interior, but I guess it's gonna be something to do with potatoes potatoes maybe like a grocery or something like that like the farmers are bringing over the produce and they sell it in this building maybe i also have done a little bit of work on interiors here we have a little pottery store and even a pot being made this is actually a minecart under here and i might replace that with a pot because because i guess these are fire then of course we have a little market stands out here over in this area i've done a little more work on interiors still working on them on stream here and there and when i feel like it but they are coming along as we'd have a little flower store over here as well for now behind a warehouse here I just added in a few boxes to fill it out because it was looking really, really empty. And with those details in, that means that this whole project is completed. Yes, not just the expansion for the day, but this whole city is finally done. And that just feels crazy because I started this project so many months ago and oh my god, now that it's done, I'm so happy with it. I might or might not already have a few ideas on how I can make an even better city in the future, but for now... This city is done. A year ago, I took on the challenge to create an interconnected world filled with farms and builds of all kinds. And well, today I want to finish this project off by creating one last factory, a chocolate factory, housing its very own chocolate lake. If you're as excited as I am for this episode, leave a like and maybe consider subscribing as I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year. I ran over to the storage and grabbed a few shulkers filled with dirt and stone. And to start some custom terrain, I want to change the side of the river to give myself a little more room. I'm focusing here on leaving about two blocks between the water and the first elevation change. Where we can, after bringing it up yet another couple of blocks, start working on a cliffside to get up to the height I want the chocolate factory. I'm happy with the cliff for now, but I'm out of dirt, so back to the storage to stock up on that. And then right back to continuing on the terraforming, trying to smooth out the terrain above the cliffside. And well, you can see where I've terraformed this. There's no grass on the terraformed parts. And I do want to add in a little chocolate lake over here. But I'm going to wait until I get the factory in to finish that off. And well, I have a little more love to give this here. But I'll do that in a bit. As I very much want to do some building. So let's throw together a few materials. First, making a stop at the lumber mill to grab up some jungle. Before making my way back down to the storage where I want to craft up some cast iron blocks. Now, before we head back to the chocolate factory, I need to just run over here to where I have some copper oxidizing. Because I'm going to need to turn some of this one stage down. And I need about four, which is why I have four honeycomb. Which we can just grab up a little fast. Then with a stone cutter, turn that into some slabs. Where I now want to take these blocks we'll gather up here. And well, I, I got to do some digging. With the area cleared here now, I'm thinking we are going to start in the corner here and work our way outwards as well. That over there is going to be where the front of the chocolate factory is. Uh, we need something behind this, of course. So starting ourselves off with our jungle logs here before we work ourselves into some planks, building up this first room. And my thought for this back room here is definitely going to be a sort of train station. As well, I forgot something in my dye factory, and um, that is brown dye. The, the factory can make brown dye, but uh, it, it's not. So I need to export some cocoa beans from this factory over to that. So I quickly just want to take this floor here, mine that away, and change it out for some deep slate. Then on the front here where the train is going to enter, I'm thinking, no, that's not what I'm thinking at all because I don't have enough for that. I'm thinking we do some spruce support up here to round it off a little bit. And then we use some trap doors on each side, one at the top and down the other side as well. Just make a little nicer arch there. And then before we head upwards in this build here, I want to add in a little bit of a terrain stop here at the end as I want to get some tracks in here in just a little bit. But we just need to extend these up. Let's see if I remember how to build one of these. I've literally used this since the first time i built one of them and i still think they look great up here i'd like to extend a metal girder beam along this side there isn't enough space on the other side and maybe i should have put that wall one more into the wall 
one more into the wall good words but that's a little too late now i will however get a few deployers in across down here before we can extend in a few more up here as this is going to act as our garage door or well a door to the train place I guess it's a garage door. Just sounds a little too modern. But with that in, let's start working on our roof here. For this, using that cast iron that we crafted up earlier. And that's looking great, but I did grab up that copper here that I want to extend up across the top to make it a little nicer or a little bit of variation in there at least, which I think looks great. And then I want to add in this final little bit of detail. And while these definitely look a little odd at the moment, I think they're going to look really good once we get the rest of the factory in, which now I've really limited myself here with the space I've got, extending it out to, well, here. So eh, it's a fair bit of space. It, it should be enough, right? We, we shouldn't have any issues with space. Before we work on the rest of the factory, though, I want to head over here to our train station or train yard and grab up some train tracks. And I think two stacks is going to be enough as well. Oh my god, it's a half building. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. We're going to add that in running this way. And I have a schematic cannon prep, which I actually have a couple of blocks that I didn't break. We'll get, we'll get this situated first. I want this running into the mountain here. As well, we have a tunnel entrance right here. So so why don't we just connect another train to that curve right there and run it up here? It should work, right? Okay, I think that should work. Let's go ahead and get our drill. We are definitely going to destroy the tunnel a bit, but I'm going to try to minimize that by probably activating it around here. Okay, and I will make it through. Perfect. Gotta be a little careful here on the exit. So I don't want to break the factory we just built. Or well, part of it. A few torches here to light it up a little temporarily because I don't want any mobs running out at me. But that's definitely going to work. I need to decorate the tunnel. But chocolate factory first. Yep. Definitely not putting that off. Nope. But with the tunnel dug out, I ran over to the storage and grabbed my two shulker boxes with the materials for the train and got that built by the schematic cannon. And well, here we have the train. And if you just hop in here and sit ourselves down and then we can park it up. So that train is just going to sit here now. And well, we can eventually load that up with cocoa beans from the factory of course yes yes but before we continue with the chocolate factory i i want to address this 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 is bringing me pain i know this can look so good it just needs a little bit of love so the first thing i want to do to it to make it look a little better is definitely going to be overhanging the dirt a little bit above the cliffside that definitely looks better. It's a little rough, I won't lie. I've done cliffs like this in the past, but I, 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 I've kind of forgotten how I used to do them, so I've got to learn again, but I don't think it's bad. Next up here, I do want to take some mud, however, down here at the bottom of the river to just change that out. So I want to try some new things here with the terraforming for my future worlds. As well, I really, really enjoy terraforming, and uh, I think this is a great project area because it's kind of out of the way, and I can, I can have a little test ground here where I can add in some mud at the river base for example and well i'm gonna end it off round about here i would love to extend it around the whole island but i just don't have the time to do it sadly definitely one of those projects i should have started a little earlier in the world but here i am and what will you do about it and well we'll end it up over here so it's basically just covering the cliff and i think that's fine just adding in those two things to the cliff and the riverside here added a lot but i think i want to come in with a little bit of vegetation to kind of finish this area off. When I felt done terraforming by the river, I set my sight on the terrain beside the train track as that was looking a little rough. And walking down the path here of the brand new terraforming, this backside looks a lot better now. Still need to add in a little bit of detail here on the crossing and connect it up to the pathway down there. But I also went ahead and finished the tunnel, decorating that up so that it wasn't just an ugly mess. But I want to continue working on the chocolate factory now. And I've actually prepared this little box of goodies here and a schematic cannon that I'm just going to go ahead and turn on. And this is going to be building the basement of chocolate factory. Okay, yeah, that, there we go. I don't know why it stopped. But this is going to be building the basement which is well below here um uh it looks a little scuffed but i hope i hope it's doing what it should be oh we're actually starting to see some of the basement it's it's a complete mess down here and um i don't think i'm even gonna add an entrance it's it's just gonna work okay it's it's just gonna work i don't i don't even want to look at it i, I don't even want to think about it but there's a whole lot of different things here for example this is gonna be our sugar which is gonna get crushed up into well sugar from sugar cane this here is gonna be our bread to make sweet rolls this here is honeyed apples no that one is the apple and this is honey to get the honeyed apples. I think that's the four inputs I have down here. Sugar, wheat, honey, 
and apples. And well, it isn't firing anymore, so I think it's done. I just have to hook up these chutes, the power over here, another chute, a fluid pipe. As long as I hook all of that up the correct way, I should be fine and the whole factory should work, hopefully. Or well, we, we have to build the rest of the factory that actually assembles everything. But to do that, we're going to need some materials. And well, the first on my list is actually not going to be in the storage room as I need to head to my desert. And I'm looking for a mushroom island biome. And I think the only place I've spotted it in my world is south of this desert. What on earth is this? Why is there a tree in the ocean? <laughs> Okay, well, we're on the right track at least. Yep, there it is. Okay, perfect. It's a really small island, if I remember correctly, but I don't need a lot from it. I just, I just need some mycelium. I don't need much of it. This should definitely make do. And if I just place these into the crafting table like this, we should get four stacks of salt blocks and this is going to be our roof for the factory. Might sound a little weird, but I think it's going to work. Oh, every time I fly back into this island here, I love it so much. I've also just embraced calling it an island. I don't really know why, but it feels fitting. However, I do want to turn the salt blocks here into slabs. Then flying over to the lumber mill for the second time today, where of course I want to craft up some wood supplies. Quick stop over in the city to just grab a few stacks of bricks before running around in my storage room for a bit, gathering up the last couple of blocks. Stop interrupting! materials all here over at the factory and i think we should get right into the factory building up some walls using a new mix of blocks going from stripped spruce through dirt variants all the way to bricks with the walls in i want to head over here to the far side where i want to start stacking up some andesite pillars up to this height we need two block gap before we get another one in one block this one can go maybe two blocks higher and then we'll go over another two blocks looking at this here for a second let's take Take this one up one more block and these two up another one as well. And then between these here, I want to get in some cut andesite. Until we get up to this side here where we can kind of make this into three podiums or platforms. Where I on all of these want to extend up three andesite train hulls. Adding in a small little decoration sheet metal here at the bottom to give them a little more support. And then extending those train hulls up. Up here, I want to add in a temporary block before we can get some of our half slabs here. Then a campfire and extend up two trapdoors above that. Before, of course, repeating this on the two other smokestacks. Then back down here on ground level, I want to start working up a staircase using some catwalks here to turn that around, extending it up. Let's see, one more block here before we can get a little bit of a catwalk in right here. And I forgot the door, but we can go ahead and run through the factory to quickly grab that. And there we go. We'll fix. Whoa. I, that scared me. Or so I done over there now, I want to extend up another one of these platforms. Then on top of this, again with our train hulls, this time it's not smokestacks, it's going to be some tanks, which we can get sheet metal on top of that, then bring in some pipes, no wait, bringing pipes upwards into the middle and continuing that up one more and we can bring it across here on this mud all the way over to here where we get a sheet metal in. And I think we need to address this hole. We're down here, want to get in two chutes on these blocks. Actually, we'll only do one right here as we extend up two girders and then another chute. We get a few more girders in right over here before we do our first shoot and let's bring up two industrial iron blocks on top of this before extending some cast iron across between these then on top of this foundation here i've laid i want to start getting some diorite in bringing ourselves up a couple of blocks on top of this i want to bring back a classic roof that we've been doing in this world 
with some stairs right here at the bottom before we transition into some slabs extending that of course into our wall because well we wouldn't want a hole in our roof would we and with some windows and details in i think the side is looking pretty good well at least the first story um basement needs a little bit of work and second story definitely needs work but before we do get working on that second story i want to pop around to the front and add in an entrance using that diorite mix again and adding some details such as another tank and some letters on the wall well, with the outside at least half done, maybe I want to move on to the inside. As I want to get some create components rolling. So first off, extending up our floor over here where I have to leave some holes. Let's see. Three stairs and some more deep slate. This is where I want to make the chocolate over in this little mess. To do that though, we're going to need a few things. One of them being milk. So I want to add in a giant fluid tank up here. Leaving one hole there at the bottom because I do want to bring a pipe out, of course. Then we just take some fluid tanks, extending this up, let's say, four blocks. Let's see, bringing this up one block, some depots right here. We need a blaze burner before we can get out, let's see, a basin on top of that. Removing the side of that. And then let's get some funnels inputting in there. And this is basically the chocolate input. So we're going to get sugar and cocoa beans on these two here from fans in the basement. Then milk from that. And with the whisk and the blaze burner right below there, we're going to get chocolate, which we can pump upwards. And I'm thinking we want that to go out there, in over there, and into a tank in the corner. So let's go ahead and get this built. All right, let's see here. So chocolate comes over to this tank here. Let's get ourselves a barrel, two item drains, and then bringing out a depot I have on me here and placing that there. Over here, I'm thinking we're going to be making our chocolate bars, which means that we need a basin right here. And then if we grab a spout, we get that up here where we can... Oh, never mind. We get that up there. There we go. Where we can glaze berries. And what else could you do with chocolate? I, I guess we could fill a bucket. Then to create the chocolate bars, we're going to need a metal press right up here. Hooking this up through, let's see, one of those there and there. Then we can bring this one up one more. Nope, no, not, not there. One more there. If we go ahead here and get some pipes down, we can get one of those. That's going to enter into there and that will go in there. Perfect. Connecting up a few things here. Everything here should work. Now, if I give it power and well, have the inputs, we have no milk. We have no cocoa beans. We have no sugar. Um, yeah, the, the honey apple machine is also right behind me, but we don't have any apples nor honey. It, it's, it's, this is going great. But not to worry, I will get back to this in just a second, but I want to take a short little break. As well, I need a way off this island. I am quickly running out of space here, so I'm heading over to the end of the farming district to build up a bridge so that we can take a train off this island. Well, at least I have a bridge. Um, yeah, the terrain is not looking great though, I will admit. But the bridge goes to uh, nowhere. I, I can kind of leave the island at least. Um, I'll, I'll make the, I'll, I'll make it longer. I swear. I promise. And also fix the terrain, of course. Uh, just um, chocolate factory calls. Back at the chocolate factory here. Let's continue working on a few things. And the first one is definitely we're going to have to sort out our cocoa bean situation. So let's extend across some spruce support here. That gives ourselves a little bit of support. Might even, yeah, we're going to remove that. Then if we get up here, I want to start with our jungle log. I see three blocks out from the wall, extend this across to three blocks there, and then we can extend this upwards. Let's see how much log we have. We can probably get it up another two blocks here. Yep, there we go. Then let's get ourselves our cocoa beans, and let's go ahead and get them in right now. There's no reason not to, and I need a few more to fill this out, as they won't be planting them automatically, but it will be harvesting them. Heading up here, let's first of all place two encased chain drives right there before we get our gantry shafts and extend that across over to this point, I believe. Under this, we can get our carriagen, extending down four linear chassis. Then we're going to need a barrel on the bottom of that. Or if we can even use more scaffolding here, we'll get some mechanical harvesters out because this is well, what we need to harvest the cocoa beans, which we can place on the side going all the way up to that point. Yep. 
Then we should only need to glue this bottom bit. This adds linear chassis, so that should stick to it. And that's just going to go across and back here and harvest our cocoa beans. So we're going to need something here to tell you when to do this. So first, adding in a floor of copycat panels, as I really like this up here in the, like, rafters of the factory. Then let's get a gear shift in right there. Getting ourselves my shulker out here. Let's see. Let's place a deep state block there. Then I'm going to need a torch, redstone dust. Let's see. Pulse extender set to, let's say, a minute. Then another one facing this direction, also set to a minute. Then we lap some redstone dust connecting to that thing. And then three redstone dust here should activate it, which deactivates the torch. Then once this timer is up, that deactivates this redstone, which sets this one minute timer off, which then when that turns off, will activate the circuit again and the, the, it will switch back and forth. I'm actually really, really proud of this redstone can you tell and stepping down and adding this little thing here which is a vault for the coca beans then let's see so we have a chute going down to the basement which brings it over to the chocolate mixer then some drains here on the back rolling it over and well as you can see on this side into the train which we can transport over to the dye factory to get ourselves our brown dye and looking at this wall up here it looks like some of these are ready for harvest so let's just go ahead and do that and maybe we can fill it up there we go now that just needs power and that should work which means well we have the first component of chocolate the, the first. Oh, oh, boy. Well, I guess we technically have sugar cane as well. We're just not bringing it over here right now. But before I go ahead and fix that, I want to grab my shulker boxes here and head up to the roof. As well, I want to finish off the building and the milk part, which is at the top of the building. First thing we can do here is stack up some polished limestone here on the edges, up to the top, down on the other side. Then mycelium on the bottom layer right here. Before we can bring out some copycat steps, put that in our offhand. And let's extend this across across the front of this. Now that we have the first part of our roof in, I want to start adding in some walls for a third story. And with our roof on there, let's just get some windows in right here. And I want to grab these andesite bars over here. And let's see, let's remove that. Extend this up. One, two, three, out on every single side. And then one more top as a little detail. I think it looks really good. And I've just got some random pipes over here to add in that. At least going down into there. That one won't be functional. The one that will be is the one over here, which will go straight down and into the milk tank. Which, why don't we just open that up a little bit so that we can see the milk flowing in there? Now we need to build the milk part on the inside. Now, on the inside here, let's head up to this part where I want to add in a beam of this. Of course, breaking that block, adding that there because I need to bring the power across. Then if we hop down on the fluid tank here, let's just add in the copycat panels to again extend in a floor for us to stand on up here. Thinking about this, this might get a little cramped. So let's get this bl one block down. Down here instead. And with our platform in, I want to get the create components placed down. I think the final thing here is just going to be a deployer facing this way. And on this one funnel on that side, one on that side, this one's going to be inputting. Then to make sure that no buckets just fly away, let's actually wait. Hold up. Let's do that a little nicer. We can flip that around and, um, no, 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 that's not what I meant to do. Extend that up. I did not know you could apply those there, but I guess the more you know. Then we can do that instead. That's going to look a little better. And then some filters. Well, we are actually only going to need one filter, which is on a milk bucket. And that's going to be on that one. Yeah, that one is already only going to have buckets. That's fine. And I actually have five buckets just sitting on me. So I'm just going to throw those in there and they will go into the system once it turns on. So let's see here. So place a weight stained glass there. Then two supports on either side. And one 
come back here. Uh, these make them bigger there. And I'm going to have to get a cow in here. But before, let's just add in the front panel, I feel like is a smart idea. And that will also cover with glass. All right. Now I just have to find a cow. But before I do that, I'm going to have to repair my light drop. Because it's almost about to break on me. So let's just fly over to the city. Ooh, okay. That's a roof where we can head into our masons. And I should have some emeralds here. And if we just trade some quartz with these guys, quickly, I feel like my lighter should be repaired here. Uh, almost. Just one more. Yeah, perfect. Now, cows. I think I've killed all of the animals on this hill right here. I think I'm gonna have to look on the other side of the river, even. Maybe up on this hill. Oh, there's one. There is one little lone cow. Come on, buddy. You're gonna be um, stuck in a factory forever. Yeah. Producing milk constantly. Woohoo. I know, right? You're excited. At least I'm excited. I, I want chocolate. Lucky for me, this build is built into the side of a mountain or hill at least. So I should just be able to place these three blocks here and we should be up there. Now, how would the easiest way for me to do this? Maybe get up on the actual roof roof. Okay. Up on the final roof here. Let's see. Is it this block? Oh, almost. Oh. This one. Should just be able to drop you in there, right, buddy? Get the lead off you, and then... Yes, okay, perfect. And that should be everything here, actually. I added in this little spot here to make the sweet rolls from that weighted ejector. And I think that's it. I just need to power it, then it should all work, minus that we don't have all of the inputs. While the factory itself is now working, if we give it some power, I just want to pop up to the roof real quick to add in a chocolate side. And that just finishes off the exterior so well. But now I really, really want to hook this up. So do we have, okay, 87 shafts, that's a little low. And while we fly back here, I just want to quickly show this build off. I actually finished off the cave here, added in a little Midas River, I think Chad was calling it, over in a stream a few weeks ago here. And I really, really love it. It, it, it needed to be done. I, I pushed it off for way, way too long. But that little distraction aside there, yep, we have a lot of shafts. Four should definitely be enough. And the closest would definitely be the lumber mill, but the lumber mill does not have the sufficient power. So we're going to have to take it from here, I think. But this isn't spinning because, oh, right this okay but what i should be able to find somewhere in the wall in here is a cave okay and yeah okay here this is and i should just be able to take some power from right here so this should be hooked up to the steam power plant so we'll flip that down and then let's take ourselves downwards okay i think this is far down enough then bringing out at least one gearbox here as we just flip that around and then off in this direction we go i hope this is the right way actually Ooh, wait that's gonna be an issue i think or well um yeah we can cut by there. If we just grab some andesite casing here to cover it up as well. But this shows that we're right on the right path at least. So that's nice. And okay, perfect. We're going to go past this. And if we go this direction, yes. Okay, so this is probably around here where we want to hook it up. So we need to take it up one block with the, uh, what is it called? The rotation thing. The rotation speed controller. There we go. Get that in. Two of those in there. And then one of these in here. That is spinning the correct way. Okay, cool. Um, Everything's spinning the correct way? Everything's spinning. Okay, and now we just speed it up. Um, oh, something's happening. Bread is being created. Uh, which also means that the loader worked, right? Is there honey in here? There's honey in there. I mean, it feels like everything's working. Oh, oh no, oh no, we're getting, we're getting milk. Um, okay. We're getting milk in the chocolate tank and we can see the outside. Um, okay. We are getting milk though and we have sugar and we actually have cocoa beans. We just don't have any, the thing. Okay. Um, I'm gonna need a filter on this though. So let me just grab some cocoa beans and sugar, a bucket of milk, and let's fire with my storage to get that hooked up. Hooked up, what am I talking about? I just need to throw some milk in here. Then is it one cocoa bean, one sugar, and some heat. There we go. Chocolate buckets. And with our chocolate bucket here, let's just put that on there, which means that we can't get any milk into the tank or well, at least not more than we already have. Luckily, I don't think it's too hard of a fix if we just take away the tank. There we go. It's empty now. And we can just fill the bottom back in. Oh, right. Uh, all of this has milk in it as well. Oh, great. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right now, you might be wondering why I have sugar, wheat, and all that in the system. But that's actually because I did go ahead and hook this up and the terrain schedule to get this over here. I just got to get under the ground down here where I have a little system to load it with hopefully not too many items. It doesn't work as I had planned because, well, there's a um, there's a terrain up here that doesn't take them. Anyways, this is a loader that should, well, only load eight stacks of each item now before it would have been four. 
Right. Just because I know for a fact I'd have more sugar cane and honey blocks than I would, for example, wheat. And I didn't want to just fill up the terrain completely with that. But I also could have just used two boxes on the trains and I could have probably just skipped all of this. With the factory now being powered up, I had to make one more input here, being charcoal so that we can actually get some chocolate. Okay, so coal is definitely hooked up because we're creating chocolate and we have been for a little bit because I have bars of chocolate. Oh, yes. I also went ahead and hooked up the apples over from the lumber mill, which means we are now getting honeyed apples. And that's, I think, everything in here working. The cocoa beans are a little slow. We are getting chocolate and well... We have used a lot of chocolate, but I need this to fill up a little more because I have a lake to fill. Because of course, we, we need a chocolate lake. So let's grab up these chokers here. And while we wait for that to work, I need to do a little bit of terraforming. Because, well, I kind of built this bridge and then just, um, yeah, it looks great. So to fix this ugly mess here, I want to start off with making some markers to get a visual idea of how I want this terrain to look. Then with some markers giving me an idea for the feel of this terrain, I went ahead and filled it all in. And well, spending this little time here was so worth it. I have a few friends here, but I added in some mud along the river bottom right here. And I also extended it all the way over to the rice farm over there, which I really, really love. And well, I've kind of decided that I'm going to do this all the way around the island. But well, this is the last episode, so I'm just going to do that because... For my own satisfaction. Oh, ouch. Um, but since this is the last episode, it also means there's a word download in my Discord, which you can find in the description below. But we're not done yet because we still have a little more work to do right over here. And the first of that is definitely going to be seeing if we have chocolates. Right. I, I was a little too far away, maybe. So let's just speed up the process here by running over to our bone farm and grabbing a few stacks of bones so that we can make some bone meal and get some more cocoa beans. Okay, all of those are grown up at least now. That should give us a bunch of cocoa beans. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this should be filling up our chocolate tank here quite well. Nice. Okay, I'm going to leave this for a little bit more and let's get ourselves up halfway in because I need to hook that up to down there and the door. Now back in storage real quick here to grab two iron sheets. You can also grab, let's see, four spruce palisades. And I need one more spruce plank. Slip the storage around twice here and get ourselves some orange dye right over in this box. And craft up some orange decal. Just to get in some warning signs here for the train, which we should definitely hook up here. Just got to get those in. That, that, yep. and one of those. Just like we have down there and over at the other two stops. And this should be the schedule we need in here. So let's just go ahead and flip that trapdoor down, give that to you, and you can head off. And are you going to stop? Is the other train... Where's the other train at? Okay, no, the other train is not in the station. You should go there. Then you should back up and arrive over here. Yep, there it is. Connect up to this one and, well, that one as well. But connect up to that one. Get loaded by everything here. Once that feels like it's done over there, it should head back to the factory with no worries and unload that. And that should be everything working at the factory and automated. And, well, maybe we have enough chocolate. We have 43 buckets. Yeah, I think that might work. Let's see. Let's grab some copper stuff. I've got a few buckets here which we can just put under here. And those will get filled up with chocolate. So this is exciting. I'm going to probably have to fix the foundation a little bit as we're mixing a few blocks but there, 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 and there. And then we can get some cheat stairs around that. Oh, the train is returning. Perfect. That all the way around. And then we put some chocolate right in the middle. Oh, this is gonna, oh, this is gonna flow far. Um, uh, buddy. And I guess since you can't see through it, it won't matter if this lake is one block deep or not. So, um, I'm just gonna make it one block deep. Definitely not deception here. And, um, now I gotta fill this with chocolates. And the final buckets of chocolate here to fill out the lake. It definitely looks interesting. And I definitely think it fits the building. So yeah, let's go ahead and keep it. It's also not the fact that I spent like an hour filling it. It, it took so long. But mainly because I was out of chocolate. There's one little more thing I want to add here on the far side. Which is going to be a little pathway leading down to the river. Just slithering our way down here to around about this point. Where I just want to bring out a little bit of a pier. That's what they're called. I uh, definitely didn't forget that in the last episode. But a wooden pier. 
here is probably what this should be called or would be called some spruce right out here at the end just to give it a little bit of support open that off with some trap doors and then we can get in a few more trap doors in here to just add in a little bit of detail and then we have a little pathway up to the factory not sure what this would be used for but hey if you want to take a little bit of a break from working on the factory or working at the factory you can go down and fish down here and well back up at the shortcliffe factory i feel like it has finally reached its ending product here we're making chocolate right over in this barrel over here which is why we don't have any in the tank but that's working its way up and will continue as this goes back and forth the train here is picking up and leaving items perfect and with the outside fully decorated that brings this final project of the world to a close and well, I think it's time for me to leave this world. Flying past the lumber mill, back over the mountain, around past the iron farm that started it all, over to my storage building. At the front here, I've pulled up a train that's ready for me to go. And this is my fluid train that I've just revamped a little bit, and I'm gonna place, let's see, let's get some of these down here in the middle. And I wanna get my toolboxes out, and we can place those right here, because I gotta bring these along with me, you know? There we go, a few more toolboxes loaded up here with some junk from the storage that we can bring into the next world and well i think we're ready to say goodbye so let's go ahead and hop on board here and i don't have any train station or anything set up so i guess i'll be driving passing out of our train yard heading around through our train station over here and here we are passing by the farming district over towards the bridge and well we have a train track on the other side and who knows where it will take me where on earth am i And well, what a journey this world has been. I've had some amazing times working in this world. And well, spending over 2,000 or well, just 2,000 days in this world has been an absolute blast. I'm sad to see the world go, but I know there's so many good projects coming in the future. And if you made it to the end, thank you so very much for watching this entire movie. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.